This is easily the biggest video that I have ever done, and it probably will end up being the biggest video that I will ever do in terms of length and scope. I wouldn't be surprised if this filming session takes an extra day, but this is something that I've been working on for a while now and that I've been wanting to do for a while, and now I am finally ready to do it. So, I haven't done a full-length album review in a long time, so I thought I'd make this one a little bit special. As you can tell from the title, today we are going to be reviewing the soundtrack for the 2018 Nintendo Switch video game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I know this is going to be a little bit different than a lot of the other videos on this channel, given that they're mostly just music reviews, and this is still a music review, but for a video game soundtrack. But obviously, with 10 years later being over, I'm going to diversify the content a little bit, and this is a project I've been dreaming of doing for a while, so let's just jump right in. So for those of you that don't know, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the fifth main entry in the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Technically six, but the fourth entry was divided into two games, Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, but they're kind of colloquially referred to as Super Smash Bros. 4. The idea of Super Smash Bros. as a franchise is that it's a fighting game featuring various characters from other Nintendo franchises like Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, Donkey Kong, etc. Lately, there are also fighters that appear from major non-Nintendo franchises like Sonic the Hedgehog, Final Fantasy, Banjo-Kazooie, Minecraft, Kingdom Hearts, many, many more. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's big selling point is that every character that's ever been in a previous Super Smash Bros. game is here. In previous games, they would include certain characters, but then not include them in the next game, but this time, that is not the case. Everyone who's ever been in a Smash Bros. game is here. Combine that with several new characters, as well as downloadable characters, and Ultimate is almost like a history lesson in video gaming. With such a big history museum comes, of course, music, and Smash Ultimate has a lot of that. The overall soundtrack is 1,068 songs stretching a little over 37 hours. This is divided into original music from the Super Smash Bros. series, songs from the characters' respective universes, and miscellaneous music hailing from franchises that are represented in ways beyond playable characters. Stages, assist trophy characters, Mii Fighter costumes, things like that. And yes, I went through and listened to them all. This video is already gonna go on very long, so what I'm gonna do is review each series' individual music and talk about how they fit with their respective franchise and potentially with Super Smash Bros. I will also include some timestamps to different franchises in case you don't want to see my thoughts on one franchise's music over the other. Also, forgive me if this isn't an in-depth review of each franchise's music or if I don't mention your favorite favorite song. This is already an incredibly long script. I don't want the final video to be an hour or anything like that. Also, forgive me for this in advance, but I haven't played every single series that's represented here. Just bear that in mind as I talk about these songs. If I don't go as in-depth with a certain franchise as maybe you would be able to, my apologies. Of course, since we're going by series, the one that we're starting with is the original music from the Super Smash Bros. franchise. The music in this game, specifically hailing from the Super Smash Bros. games, is 130 13 tracks stretching just over three and a half hours. That's definitely a lot for a franchise with just five games. I'd say six, but Smash 3DS and Wii U have largely the same music. It helps that there are a lot of remixes thrown in, meaning it's not uncommon for several franchises to have one song with two or three different versions, the original and a remix or two. In the case of the Smash franchise, it's also common for the series to take its main theme from the particular game and try to twist it with variants throughout some of the game's other songs. Nowhere is this more clear to me than with Smash Ultimate's main theme, Life Light. Let me make it clear for a minute. Life Light fucking bangs in English and Japanese. There's such epic instrumentation and beautiful vocals, it honestly gave me goosebumps and brought a tear to my eye when I heard it. That said, the fact that there are so many tracks that sound like Life Light and use that particular sound can be a bit tiring. It got to a point where I kind of stopped counting how many songs sounded like Life Light because quite a few just started feeling pretty samey. I suppose the other games had 
similar things with their themes, but I didn't notice it as hard either because there were more songs in Ultimate compared to other games, or because the earlier games kind of broke up the sound a bit better, like in Brawl's Subspace Emissary. Or maybe I just like Subspace Emissary's music variants better. Step the Plane, for example, is a lovely, lush variant of the Brawl theme and one of my favorites in the series. It's at least nice that each Life Flight variant brings its own style to the sound, and if nothing else, they're sort of on the short side. My favorite might be the lighter, piano-driven version that is Classic Mode Defeat, or the epic, grandiose main theme piano solo as far as piano variants are concerned, or Classic Mode Bonus Stage, which is a lot more technical and futuristic sounding, and it really changes things up nicely. The Dark Realm tracks are also great. They have some essence of Life Flight, but are so epic and heart-pounding that you almost forget because they're so energetic. Most, if not all, of the major music from the previous Smash games is here too, and it was a huge nostalgia trip getting to revisit these. Having grown up with the entire series, it's always a treat getting to revisit the 64 menu theme, the Melee Openings Incredible Brawl remix, the Brawl Credits, Boss Battle Song 2 from Brawl, or the Brawl opening that to this day I'd wager a lot of people still don't know the lyrics to. The overall musical sound of the Smash series goes for a very epic adventurous vibe, as if almost every song sounds like it's being played in the heat of battle. Rarely do the tracks slow down to take a breath, which is pretty fitting for the style of gameplay they embody. The most that a track might slow down is if it's for a menu, like the Ultimate Vault theme, the All-Star Rest Area tracks, the Brawl sticker album and Chronicle theme, or the Trophy Gallery song from Brawl, which may be my favorite Smash series song. It's so light, mellow, and nostalgic, and even if it kind of contradicts the Smash series sound, it's just so beautiful. I think the funniest part of revisiting the Smash series music for me was hearing songs that were used for Brawl's online mode. I'm already not huge when it comes to online gaming, but to add to that, Super Smash Bros. Brawl's online was notoriously bad, thus I largely stayed away from it back in the day. So when I heard music that was specifically tied to it, I couldn't help but go, hey, there was unique music in Brawl's online mode? All in all, the Smash series music is pretty great stuff. A lot of suitably epic, grandiose songs where it constantly feels like being in the midst of an intense battle. It still is a bit strange that they reuse a lot of theme songs like Life Light, for example, but I guess this is also something you only really notice when you listen to the songs all at once. There are still enough variations to keep them interesting, and it is wonderful to see how the older theme songs are integrated into the newer games, so all in all, it definitely sets the mood right for some huge battles. Moving right along, we have the Mario series. One of gaming's most iconic franchises and one of my personal favorites, Mario has his fair share of music here. 91 tracks across three hours of music, and the funny part is there's technically two sets of Mario music, but we'll get to that second set in a minute. For now, the songs listed under the Mario series cover the main series as well as its many sub franchises, Super Mario Brothers, Paper Mario, Mario & Luigi, Mario Party, the Mario Sports Games, and Luigi's Mansion, with some helpings of Mario Brothers Arcade, Dr. Mario, Mario Paint, Captain Toad, and even a Mario vs. Donkey Kong track. Geez, all we need is a Mario Teaches Typing song and then we've got everything covered. Mario music generally carries a plucky vibe, echoing the colorful tone of the series that it comes from. Very bright, joyous, and sunny, though it ups the intensity when it comes to boss battles, where they go for a bit more of a dark tone. Newer games tend to go for a more grand sound, though this is really just the result of time. The classic songs were made with what was technologically possible, whereas the newer songs have a full orchestra to pull from. Mario does have a similar thing to Smash, where there are a lot of remixes of the default Mario theme, but they do differentiate themselves very nicely, like Melee's interpretation is something a bit bigger and more boisterous, where Brawl's version is a bit more jazzy and piano-influenced. It's arguably the most known musical composition in gaming, and it's a real test testament to the composition work that the developers can change it up in a lot of ways. There is even an entire rock version of the song in the game, and the guitarist shreds on it. Gotta hand it to them on that one. And special shout out to the remix of the underground theme from Super Mario Land. It goes for a more rock-oriented feel, and it makes the song sound pretty badass. As far as the 2D Mario games go, Super Mario Bros. 2's theme is my favorite, and it was Smash that helped me enjoy it so much. I loved the Mushroom Kingdom 2 stage that featured the song in Melee, and as polarizing as Super Super Mario Bros. 2 USA is, its main theme is my favorite of the 2D games. I'm also happy the new Super Mario Bros. U ground theme is here because that's another favorite of mine. As someone who grew up in the 3D era though, I'm happy to see that some of my favorites haven't been forgotten here. Some obviously had to be excluded, like Deep Sea of Mare from Super Mario Sunshine, but what's here is great stuff. I was really happy to hear the Rico Harbor theme from Sunshine, Super Bell Hill from 3D World, and a good amount of music from Super Mario Galaxy, which in my opinion may be the greatest video game soundtrack of all time. If it's not my number one, it's definitely top three to five. I've also very openly admitted that Super Mario Odyssey is my favorite video game of all time, which is why I was super happy 
with the amount of Odyssey music in the game. Hearing it here actually helped me appreciate it more. The beautiful and luscious Fossil Falls, Break Free Lead the Way, which is an amazing vocal theme that has a big time Sonic theme vibe. And how could I forget Jump Up Superstar? That song makes me want to jump up super high, higher than the sky, and just do the Odyssey. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. As far as the spin-off songs go, I was happy to see the Mario and Luigi games get some representation. Shout out to Tough Guy Alert from Bowser's Inside Story, that's a great song. And it's nice that there was some Paper Mario rep, even though they could have added a few more songs from those games. At least the Paper Mario medley had the Rogue Port theme from Thousand Year Door, I love that track. No Super Mario RPG tracks, which is weird to me, because there's a Geno costume in the game. The Mario Party tracks are fun and upbeat enough, but there's not many of them, and even if there were Mario Party music, music hasn't really stuck out to me as being the most memorable Mario music, so one track from Mario Party 9 and two from a 3DS spin-off just aren't really going to grab my attention. Same with the Mario sports music, they're good and do a solid job setting up the mood for a sporting event, but as far as Mario music goes, they're just not the most memorable thing to me. Though maybe I'm just salty that only one song comes from a baseball section of a Mario game and that Nintendo still doesn't want to do a Mario baseball game. I'm sorry, I was having a moment. Where was I? Oh, I'm glad that some Luigi's Mansion music was included. I love the original game, and Luigi's Mansion 3 is great too, so I'm glad they were both here. I wish the original Luigi's Mansion theme was here, but I get it, it doesn't totally fit the fighting game vibe. The Brawl remix works well enough. As far as the other miscellaneous Mario songs from Mario Brothers Arcade, Dr. Mario, Mario Paint, and Mario vs. Donkey Kong, they're nice additions, and I'm glad to see they went through the lengths of even including smaller Mario music. Overall, the Mario set list was a treat. Even for the sheer amount of songs, they're such a solid variation in style, sound, and tone that makes them all compelling to listen to. Mario's music is some of the best in gaming, and I'm happy to see so many amazing songs represented here. But that's not even all of them, because Smash has a separate category for the Mario Kart songs. There's 15 tracks here from the Mario Kart series, though they only take about 29 minutes. They all have that same busy, super fast, loud style to them, befitting that Mario Kart is a fast-paced racing game. I'm glad every game from the Mario Kart series is represented, and even if some of that is in the form of remixes, those particular remixes are very good, like the Mario Circuit Super Mario Kart remix or the Rainbow Road Double Dash remix. Other highlights I would also say include Mario Circuit from Mario Kart 8 and Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 8. All in all, I don't know why the Mario Kart music got its own category compared to the other Mario songs, but hey, Mario Kart music's great all the same, so I'm glad it's here. And again, having pretty much every Mario Kart game represented in at least a song is pretty awesome too. Next up, we have the Donkey Kong series, which is a decent size, about 28 tracks at just over an hour. This playlist covers both the Donkey Kong arcade series as well as the Donkey Kong Country platformers. I love the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack, so I'm glad they largely pulled from those, but understandably there were some exclusions. Quite a bit of Donkey Kong Country music can be pretty atmospheric, which doesn't totally fit the vibe of Smash, so a lot of it had to either be cut or heavily remixed. Look no further than the song Sticker Brush Symphony. Maybe my all-time favorite video game song, but it was obviously too light for Super Smash Brothers, so they had to remix it. I initially loved the remix, but over time kind of grew away from it because I started to love the original version a lot more. Listening to the remix again for this video, I think it's amazing, very adventurous sound, and I'll always have nostalgia for it because I loved it in the Brawl and Smash 4 days, but I'd still take the original over it. Still an excellent track. Otherwise, Donkey Kong Country music tends to have a lot of deep-rooted, occasionally even jazz-oriented music that fits with the jungle nature of the series. I love the Donkey Kong Country Returns theme that's featured here, though I think the vocal remix is a little bit weird. I get what it's going for with its vocal vocalists giving monkey noises to represent Donkey Kong and his family, but it just makes the song a little too goofy. As far as other highlights, I like the jazzy feeling of the map page slash bonus level from the original. Those pianos are immaculate. Ice Cave Chant is pretty beautiful. King K. Rule slash Ship Deck 2 and Gear Getaway are also pretty action-packed and fantastic remixes that retain that airy sound of the original games despite mixing them with new sounds, like how the former has some rock elements. And of course, you can't go wrong with the jungle level music. It's got that dark mysterious but still jazz oriented sound that I love so much. There are a couple remixes of it and my favorite would probably be the 64 remix just for being the one that sticks closest to the original. Like the Brawl remix is a little too frantic for my liking. I do like how the jazz style remix from Smash 4 has some old school black and white cartoon vibes going for it. Though again like Life Light there are a lot of jungle level remixes and it can get a little bit monotonous. I do appreciate the changes to the sound but the fact that there are so many songs that carry the style can can be a 
be a bit tiring. As far as the arcade music goes, it's slightly darker with the deep 8-bit sounds because that's what Nintendo was working with at the time. Kind of nicely embodies that imposing feeling of the small jump man saving Pauline from the imposing figure that is Donkey Kong. A lot of the music was remixed here, but that's fine by me. I enjoy the remixes for the new things they bring to the table, like the Donkey Kong themes remix having a more experimental electronic sound with a deep bass line. And shout out to the bouncy Donkey Kong slash Donkey Kong Jr. medley for its almost big band kind of vibe. That applies to a lot of the Donkey Kong music, which is great because it really fits well for the series. What? Oh, fine. I'll mention the DK rap. It's a meme legend, and the remix included in this game is definitely really fun. I still prefer the original because of how goofy and over the top it is, but the remix makes me laugh because I can hardly hear some of the lyrics. Though, cutting out Lanky and Chunky's verses is a crime that, if this wasn't Smash Ultimate, could be punishable by death. I'll let Sakurai off the hook, though. He deserves a break. Overall, I do think the emphasis on jungle-level remixes can undersell just how good the Donkey Kong Country music is. David Wise, who did the soundtrack for the original games, has done fantastic work with the series that I think just wasn't included because some of it wouldn't translate well to a super fast-paced fighting game. Don't let that be an indictment of the franchise's music or an indictment over what Smash did include. Even with the bevy of remixes, what's here is stellar stuff that fits the jungle atmosphere when it's able to be a bit more spacey, but can also up the ante with great jazz influence. A lot of great stuff here, and if you have the chance, go check out the soundtracks for the original Donkey Kong Country games. They're pretty fantastic. Onward and upward, we now have what may be one of gaming's most revered and iconic franchises, The Legend of Zelda. Decent amount of ground to cover here, we've got 45 tracks stretching about an hour and a half, and it's stuff from all over the series. Pretty much every mainline game is represented here, and it's probably one of the better sets of songs. Zelda music is known for one thing and one thing only, being adventurous. Every Zelda game is like stepping into an epic, sprawling, gigantic adventure, and the music sets that vibe up from the jump. Soon as you hear the first track, which is the beautiful remix of the title theme from the original game, you're ready to step foot on to Hyrule Field, reclaim the Master Sword, defeat Ganon, and watch that the timeline branches off in a bunch of different directions that are going to be inevitably hard to follow. The overall theme is also pretty damn iconic, and it's also one of those things where it feels like every remix has a unique flair to it that makes it great. It feels like each Smash game's remix of the song gets more grand than before, which makes sense in the context of the Zelda series. As the games grow and become more grand, so too does the music. In terms of other highlights, I really love the Temple theme, which I think comes from nostalgia. I played a crap ton of Melee, fought a lot on the Hyrule Temple stage, did the Black Hole glitch a lot, so I heard the music quite a bit. Very good stuff though, I wasn't too big on Zelda 2 as a game, but at least it gave us that song. I'm personally more into the 3D Zelda games, I just recently marathoned several games in the series and beat the 3D ones, but not all the 2D ones, sorry. So I was happy to see some favorites from the 3D era here. The Ocarina of Time medley is fantastic, Hyrule Field theme, original or remix, is incredibly epic and sets the mood for Ocarina of Time nicely, and the remix to Saria song helps it carry that emotional edge from the original game, but can help it fit a little bit more of an epic fighting mood. I could honestly wax poetic about the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask soundtracks and their Smash remixes all day because those games have triple S tier soundtracks. Song of Storms, Termina Field, so many greats that weren't even included. It's a fantastic soundtrack and I'm glad to hear so much of it, though the fact that Termina Field is the only Majora's Mask song is a little bit sad. That's not to say the other 3D Zeldas didn't have great soundtracks because they really did. Dragon Roost Island from Wind Waker is a bright, sunny bundle of joy that sets up the cheerful, heartfelt vibe of the game perfectly and prepares you nicely for its high seas adventures. I have no experience with the Four Swords games, but Village of the Blue Maiden is such a lovely song. Very colorful, but also suitably big like many other Zelda songs. Wonder if I should try those games. Oh, and the Twilight Princess theme is amazing. That could be nostalgic because Twilight Princess was the first Zelda game I owned, but it's still such an epic theme that definitely fits brilliantly for a more, lack of a better word, adult vibe that Twilight Princess would take on from Wind Waker. Battle of the Goddess is pretty beautiful too, though I feel like the reason I'm bringing it up is to say that Skyward Sword is one of my favorite Zelda games and I think it's criminally underrated. Sorry, just had to get that off. Breath of the Wild's music is generally much lighter and more low-key, but here in Ultimate, the main theme of Breath of the Wild is extremely lush and beautiful. Sets up the vibrant, incredible world and journey that Link is going to take on in that game very nicely. Man, listening to the Zelda soundtrack was such a treat. The Legend of Zelda series has some of the 
greatest video game music of all time, and what's represented here is the complete package. Some of the most beautiful stuff in the series and in gaming as a whole, and I don't think this soundtrack gets bogged down by the too many remixes thing. There's a lot of different tracks from all the games, and it feels like an incredibly well-rounded and comprehensive set of music. Definitely listen to what's here, and also check out some of the other songs that didn't make it in, because Zelda music is amazing. Let's keep going, though. Next, we have the Metroid series. 25 tracks here, stretching about 52 minutes. Good amount of content. Metroid music is generally a lot darker and more mysterious in tone, very ambient and full of atmosphere. It plays into a lot of the dark dungeon crawling adventure style of the Metroid series, though there are some tracks that have a brighter technological style playing into its space adventure story. A lot of the Metroid music is remixes of pre-established songs, which honestly kind of makes sense given how minimal the old school music is and the fact that a lot of it is comprised of minuscule 8 and 16 bit sounds and bleeps and bloops. The composers probably felt they needed to add some more instrumentation and give the songs a bigger tone to round them out more. Which is fine by me because the remixes are great. The Smash 64 remix of Brin Star is a nice upgrade that also sticks closely to the sound of what was offered in the classic games. And the same could definitely be said with the Brin Star Depths remix from Melee. Norfair's remix felt so technological and old school, you could have told me it was from the original game and I would have believed you. It was also super funky too. Not what I would expect from a Metroid game, but it honestly made me want to dance, which is weird. Escape was also surprising, another track that felt so similar to old school Metroid stuff I wasn't aware it was a remix. And the remix to the ending theme from Metroid also was fantastic. Gave me that exact celebratory feel that beating a Metroid game comes with, and the vibrant instrumentation played into that perfectly. And how can I not mention the remix to Samus's theme from Super Metroid? It's another super booming but celebratory song that I think feels like a perfect celebration of one of the greatest heroines in gaming, Samus Aran, who might actually be the greatest heroine in gaming. Even more than the base Metroid series, I'd honestly say I'm a bigger fan of the Metroid Prime series, so I'm glad that the Prime series got a lot of love in terms of music. There are a few remixes, like the fantastic rendition of the opening slash menu theme from Metroid Prime 1, but a lot of the Prime stuff is wholly original. I also love how the Meta Ridley boss music mixes both epic but technical and really dark sounds. That's probably my favorite of the Prime tracks, though I do have to point out there is not a single song from Metroid Prime 3 here, even though Prime Hunters and Federation Force are represented. Maybe this is just me, but are there no memorable enough songs from Metroid Prime 3 worth adding in? I feel like I partially asked because Prime 3 is my favorite Metroid game, so seeing it not get rep is kind of sad. Ah, well, at least the Nemesis Ridley music from Other M is cool. See? Something good came from that game. Oh, and Metroid Samus Returns is my favorite 2D Metroid game. I know that might be a hot take, so getting to hear the Magmore Caverns music was awesome. That song really swung me into action in that game. Overall, despite a few exclusions here and there, Metroid music is also pretty fantastic, and I'd say that Ultimate does a solid job of being pretty comprehensive. I greatly appreciate the general dark vibe of Metroid music, especially after having finally played through the series late last year. I'm still a little sad about the Metroid Prime 3 exclusion because that's my favorite game in the series, but I'm picking nits. The Metroid series has wonderful music and Smash Ultimate does a great job compiling the best of the best, while also including some good remixes that capture the essence of the originals very nicely. Next up, we got a short one, but it's the Yoshi series. Obviously, after Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Yoshi broke off into his his own franchise, so his songs are individual from Mario, though they do include some Mario World stuff. 14 tracks, just under half an hour, most of it is remixes, only 3 tracks are not. And even more than Mario, Yoshi's songs are known for being very bright, sunny, and cheerful. Yoshi is obviously a more relaxed and easy series than Mario is, so the Yoshi music fits that vibe nicely. And even though I mentioned that the Super Mario Bros. 2 soundtrack has my favorite 2D Mario theme, I can't pretend that Super Mario World's theme doesn't bang. I didn't even realize it was a remix being played it sounded so close to the original. The remixes of the Yoshi's Island theme are also pretty lovely. I don't know which one I prefer, but I might go with the Smash 4 one for the slight mixes of old school sound that bring it closer to the original. Same goes for Obstacle Course, Wildlands, and Yoshi's Tail, all remixes that follow the same sunny, happy vibe, but are so cheerful and just put me in a good mood when I listen to them. Flower Field is also really nice. I don't know much about Yoshi Touch and Go, but I love the bounce this one has, as well as the quirky sound effects that give it a pretty sweet charm. Two of the tracks that aren't remixes are from Yoshi's New Island, the main theme in Bandit Valley, but both are so sweet and adorable that they're worthy high points. The only other non-remix is the Yoshi's Woolly World theme, which is pretty minimal compared to everything else, but I consider that to be a good thing. I prefer it over the remix version, which I felt had a little bit too much going on. Even with a short length, the Yoshi music is very lovely stuff. Extremely bright and sunny compared to everything, but it's the kind of stuff that's just really relaxing and sweet. Don't be fooled by the short track list and the abundance of remixes. Yoshi music is lovely 
in its own right, and if you enjoy some smooth, light fun, this series will provide that, both gameplay-wise and musically. I was talking about the music when I wrote the script, but I think that applies to the games. Yoshi's pretty fun. And in keeping with the childlike fun, next we have the Kirby series. Masahiro Sakurai, who created Smash, also created Kirby, so it doesn't surprise me that we have quite a bit of Kirby music here. 38 tracks, just over an hour. Kirby also plays into a lot of the brighter sounds, but compared to Yoshi, it's a lot more bombastic. Kirby's not afraid to go over the top with its music with a constant big band accompanying Kirby as he does almost anything. And look, I love the Kirby series. You play me Green Green, specifically the Melee rendition, and I'm a happy boy. I also love the Kirby Retro Medley, which still has the boastful and vibrant sounds of other Kirby songs, but being based on the older games, is crafted with 8-bit beeps that are pretty charming. Though I have to be fair, as much as I love King Dedede's theme, I'm not as crazy about the remixes of it. They're a little too removed from the original for me to get as excited as I'd like to, but as someone that grew up with Nightmare in Dreamland, which was the re-release of Kirby's Adventure, I'm glad to see that some of my favorites from that game, like Ice Cream Island and Butter Building, are preserved with good remixes. Butter Building Smash 4 remix is my favorite of the two. As for Gourmet Race, let me tell you something about this track. Dreamland 64 has always been my stage in every Smash game that it's in. Thus, I hear the track all the time and I do think it's good. But as someone that comes from a melee background, constantly hearing people do the damn clapping pattern of the song during tournaments has ruined the way I look at it. I can't think of it without thinking of the clapping patterns. It's still a good song though, and the Melee remix used for Fountain of Dreams is very nice and emotional. As bright as a lot of the Kirby songs are, it's fun when they up the intensity, like on Meta Knight's Revenge. The song takes on something of a jazzy feel, but it feels suitably action-packed for a character like Meta Knight. The Mark's Battle song also ups the intensity a lot and goes in a lot of different directions, which makes sense because I haven't played Kirby Superstar, but from his appearance in Smash, Mark's is one weird motherfucker. I'm also glad Planet Popstar from Kirby 64 is preserved in its original form, because that's an incredibly fun and energetic song. The Squeak Squad theme also ups the intensity a good bit and works with some excellent shredding on the guitars. Also glad Forest Stage is here because that's an iconic song, though I was surprised to learn it was in Kirby Air Ride. I've hardly played that game, so I didn't really know it would be here. Same with Celestial Valley, which is also a pretty great song, so honestly, I think I just need to play that game more. Also, as much as I wasn't crazy about Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, I am happy with the Forest Slash Nature Area remix. That was a very nice song in the past, and this remix gives it a very grand feel that makes it even more celebratory than ever. I feel like I'm giving a lot of highlights right now, but it's hard not to when I love so much of the music in Kirby. Hearing Through the Forest from Return to Dreamland again was just great. It's very bouncy and peppy from a game that was one of my personal favorites in the series. Can't wait to play the new version that's coming out for the Switch. Joyous and fun, the two things that make a lot of Kirby music so damn enjoyable. Floral Fields and venturing into the mechanized world too. I love Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, and those songs have a lot of the vibes that I really enjoyed in a track like Through the Forest. All in all, Kirby music is just feel-good stuff, and it's a perfect comfort soundtrack. Definitely check out the Kirby music that's featured in here. It's great stuff. Jumping ahead from there, let's talk about the Star Fox music. Fairly on the short side with this one, 18 tracks across 34 minutes, which kind of makes sense given that Star Fox doesn't have that many games, and despite early prominence, hasn't been a franchise Nintendo has done a whole lot with over the years. Star Fox music also lands on the boisterous, adventurous side, but with a bit of electronic influence to emphasize the space-flying nature of the series. Some songs do twist this a bit, like the Corneria remix from the first Star Fox game, which even has its share of rock influence with some shredding guitars, which actually work in service to the song. I honestly wouldn't have minded hearing this in a Star Fox game. Some of the music, like the Space Armada remix, kind of reminds me of Metroid music, which I think comes from both being space-based franchises. That said, I think Star Fox goes for stuff that's a lot more pounding and bigger, probably because Star Fox is a bit more about flying in space and adventuring than Metroid, which is more about exploring deep, dark recesses of planets. I hear that adventurous in the Star Fox medley, which was previously used as the Corneria music in Melee. That said, ever since Melee player Chillin' Dude 829 made that diss track Respect Your Elders, that's all I think of when I hear it. Soon as it started, I was expecting to hear, I'm not lawful, make this pussy stop talking, you're not one of the gods, you're one of the god awful. <sighs> Get well soon, chillin'. The main theme of Star Fox 64 is also great, and I think each individual remix is enjoyable in their own right. I'd take the Smash 64 remix as my personal favorite, though that might just be the nostalgic old school feeling of it, and how it kind of sounds like the music that the team would hear when preparing for a mission in Star Fox 64. Not that the other remixes aren't great, they're suitably grand and fit two different vibes. Where the Melee remix kind of fills the same vibe as the 64 one, the Brawl remix is super fast-paced. Sounding like the type of thing that would play in an epic Star Fox 
Deluxe Space Battle. I'm imagining the team coming head to head with Star Wolf or Andross and this being the music that plays. From there I wouldn't say there are a ton of high points but there are some good moments like the theme from Area 6 slash Missile Slipstream Medley and Space Battleground from Star Fox Assault. Both have plenty of big time energy that appropriately sets up the vibe for an epic space battle. Overall while I wouldn't say Star Fox's soundtrack is the best of what's here I think it works well within what it has. There's a comprehensive set of music and even if it's not all incredible it's largely pretty damn solid. I think the biggest thing about it is just that there aren't enough Star Fox games so there isn't really enough to pull from in terms of music. Nintendo hasn't done a whole lot with the series over the years so it's hard to pull stuff from a series that's only got six main entries many of which were released relatively far apart from each other. All in all though Smash does a good job compiling the Star Fox music given the constraints and the overall quality is pretty good. Next up we've got a beefy one and that is the Pokemon soundtrack. It shouldn't be surprising that a series as big and iconic as Pokemon has a ton of music because, yep, it sure does. 33 tracks lasting about an hour and eight minutes, and it's very good stuff. I've grown up with Pokemon even though I never beat a mainline game until Legends Arceus. I know, I'm not huge on turn-based RPGs. So a lot of these songs were very familiar to me. Pokemon music is known for its high energy style and adventurous feel, almost like this sense of you're a kid in a big world getting ready to go on a massive adventure to be the best Pokemon trainer ever. There are a lot of remixes, but I'm okay with that because I love me some Pokemon music. As far as the main theme from Red and Blue, the original remix remains my favorite, mostly for its nostalgic air that brings it the closest to the original song. The Brawl remix also does an excellent job, though I love how the hard rock intro transitions back into the more nostalgic sound of the original nicely, and I also love how bubbly and fun the Road to Viridian City remix is and how it transitions nicely even with the heavier guitar implementation. The Pokemon Red and Blue medley is also pretty great. I have a lot of memories hearing this song when playing the Poke Float stage in Melee. Same with the Gold and Silver medley, which I heard a lot of as an alternate theme for the Pokemon Stadium stage back in the day. Generation 3 of Pokemon was the one I played the most before Legends Arceus, so hearing remixes of the battle music in Victory Road was awesome. Diamond and Pearl were also pretty big in my childhood, so it was nice to hear some songs from that game, like the mellow and lovely Route 209 or the battle music against Champion Cynthia with its tiptoeing pianos. I didn't play any of Gen 5, but I did enjoy some of its songs, notably the super majestic Route 23 from Black 2 and White 2, and the heavier rock sounds of the X and Y battle theme were also great. I got back into Pokemon a bit with X and Y, so hearing some of its music was very nice, like the luscious Lumio City music. I think my only minor thing to add, and I don't even know if I'd call this a gripe, more so a question, but were there any spin-offs they could have pulled from? All the songs are from the main series, and I'm left wondering if games like Pokemon Stadium could have gotten a few tracks. It's a minor thing, though. I can't complain too heavily, because what's here is fantastic. A lot of remixes, which did leave me wishing we could have gotten more original versions, but those remixes do a good job of capturing what made the original so special. Adventures and Grand with plenty of memorable instrumental melodies. Now let's jump into the next soundtrack from the F-Zero series. Given the relative lack of games in this series and the fact that Nintendo has done nothing with it in the last decade or two, I was surprised at how much music was here. 26 tracks lasting about 45 minutes. A lot of them being remixes, but nevertheless some really strong stuff. Being that F-Zero is a racing series that's all about reaching mock speed, it should be no surprise that the songs are so fast-paced and intense. This is another series that is reliant on remixes, but the songs themselves are so iconic and there's more than enough to differentiate them. Like how Mute City goes from the older 16-bit sounds into different rock sounds as the remixes progress, until the Smash 4 remix that blends the two together but has some synth integration, or how Big Blue has a synthy variant, a 16-bit variant, and a rock-oriented variant to keep things pretty fresh. Sand Ocean has a nice groove to it, though I prefer the original version over the remix, and the anime theme song that is the F-Zero medley is also pretty entertaining and fitting to the fast-paced vibe of the series. I really like it when the game offers up a lot of the old-school F-Zero music like Silence, Port Town, and especially Red Canyon, as while the remixes are great, it's hard to beat the classics. Though Whitelands remix is pretty awesome too. It fits perfectly within the vibe that F-Zero goes for, and those sweet guitars and keys give it a classic feel that's really enthralling. Don't get it twisted, the original version in Whiteland 2 are fantastic, but the remix might actually have the them beat. Same with Firefield, what with its epic blazing rock feel that goes completely off the wall in terms of headbanging goodness. Again, the original is great, but the remix takes it up a notch and stands tall to me. Also, who would have thought that the car select music from F-Zero X would go full on metal? Jesus, it's such headbanging goodness, and such an epic track landing in such a trivial moment like selecting your car feels funny to me. The rest of F-Zero soundtrack is pretty badass too. Dream Chaser is a rock odyssey that straight up sounds like a Sonic song almost like your 
you're blasting through a level with supersonic. And Devil's Call in Your Heart is absolutely insane. Blast beats, metal-ass guitar riffs, screamo vocals. I have played F-Zero X a few times, but had no idea the soundtrack went this hard. What a blast. Overall, F-Zero's music was pretty great. Really fast and pounding, definitely the kind of stuff that would get the blood flowing. Heavy rock vibes, even a little metal thrown in for good measure, and plenty of synths, too. You know what would really get my blood flowing, though? A new F-Zero game? Come on, Nintendo, think about it. And the last of the soundtracks from franchises introduced in Smash 64 is Earthbound. 14 tracks stretching 30 minutes with this one, all remixes, and while I'm not too into the Earthbound series, I have enjoyed quite a bit of the music from the series, especially the Smash remixes. There's a very gentle, relaxing, and lovely sound to a lot of the Earthbound songs here, I suppose, to emphasize some of the more human elements of Earthbound. I say I suppose because beyond not knowing much about the series, the only thing I do know is that it gets wild. But with a track like Pollyanna, I Believe in You, we have a pretty lovely start that hints a bit more at the gentler parts of the franchise. The Smash 4 remix of Magicant is also super ethereal, mellow, and beautiful. Big time emotional vibe here that I love. Snowman also brings with it that spacey, ethereal feeling that I love, and the remix of the song that's featured in Smash gives me big time Donkey Kong Country vibes. There are some more playful songs like Humoresque of a Little Dog, which is a very ragtimey song that I can't think of the right way to describe it, but the only thing that comes to mind is barn music, like it sounds like something out of a barn. And I don't say that as a bad thing, it's a great song, I just feel the incessant urge to yell yeehaw every time I hear it. And Being Friends, the original Melee music for On It, kind of mixes the lighter sounds with some much bigger moments for a song that's just a perfect marriage. It feels like almost the culmination of all that Earthbound is, and it's a fantastic song. I could say the same for the On It theme slash Winter's theme remix, it's both busy and peppy with lighter emotional moments that mixes them pretty fantastically. As much as I love the original song that was used for On It in Smash, I loved hearing this song when playing on On It in Smash 4. It might be my favorite of the Earthbound songs here. I'll also have a soft spot for the Melee Foreside remix. Foreside is one of my favorite Melee stages and I like how the song goes for a more sweeping but dark electronic feel that plays a bit more into the alien theme storylines of Earthbound. At least I think the game has aliens and stuff. I barely played it. It's still a cool song though. And the Porky's theme remix is a very triumphant track that perfectly sets up the big climactic battle with Porky. Also, I have a lot of memories of hearing it during Subspace Emissary. All in all, the Earthbound music is a treat to listen to. There's not a ton of it, but I owe that a bit more to the fact that there are only three games in the Mother slash Earthbound series. They were working with what they could and what they had was very good stuff. A lot of mellow and emotional tracks, but with enough bright and vibrant moments to fit the vibe of Smash. If I was more into the genre that Earthbound comes from, I'd give the games a try off of the music alone. As it is, it's great stuff to listen to, and I highly recommend checking it out. Now it's time for one of the only franchises introduced in Melee, and it's a beefer, Fire Emblem. We Smash players know of the joke about there being a lot of Fire Emblem characters in Smash at this point, and it should be noted that this a lot of Fire Emblem shit mentality also applies to the music. 52 tracks lasting 2 hours and 8 minutes. I obviously understand the notion that Smash is overstuffed with Fire Emblem content, and as someone who doesn't play or know the original series, it's not exactly my first choice, but judging it objectively without that bias, I can't lie, I like a good bit of the music here. No, it didn't need to be 52 tracks, but what's here is pretty solid stuff. Fire Emblem music generally has a very sweeping, grandiose vibe, but there's also a vast number of tracks that just go straight into rock territory, as one does of course, bring in the orchestra, then bring out the guitars. The Brawl remix of the Fire Emblem theme is pretty fantastic, what with its marching snare and choir vocals that lead into that amazing beat switch. The intense gets raised, the heart starts racing, and you start feeling ready for the heat of the game's intense battles. And of course there are a couple remixes of this theme, though I really like Codename FE, which has a rocking feel that I essentially imagine would be the equivalent of the Fire Emblem theme and Reach for the Stars from Sonic Colors having a baby, which honestly I'm okay with. And I can't go without mentioning Story 5 meeting, this was the lone Fire Emblem song that appeared in Melee, and even as a non-Fire Emblem player, I used to get so pumped when this song would play. Beyond its bombastic energy, it was a very rare song that only played in certain conditions. So for me, when it came on, I always felt like I was getting some kind of rare treat. Both vibes I mentioned earlier get nailed in different portions, but as far as the sweeping songs, I really like March to Deliverance, the advanced remix that straight up sounds like a Pokemon song, and Winning Road Roy's Hope, which gives me extreme Kirby vibes. When it comes to the more action-packed array of music, I love the variants of production on a track like With Mila's Divine Protection, Celica Map 1, the epic strings on the codenamed Steam version of Lord Showdown, the 
the excellent energy of the Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem medley and the engaging horns of the Attack remix from Fire Emblem's first US release. With 52 songs, this doesn't even scratch the surface. I especially found myself grabbed by more songs starting around Path of Radiance. And that's not because I played any of the games in the series, it's probably just because I've played so much Smash that I have nostalgia from hearing the songs from Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn in the Smash games. I particularly love Against the Dark Knight and Power Hungry Fool from Path of Radiance, as well as The Devoted from Radiant Dawn. That's not to say I didn't like any of the music from the later games, though. Lost in Thought All Alone is a beautiful track with heavenly vocals. I mostly enjoy the original versions, Japanese and American, over the new instrumental remix, though Smash 4's instrumental remix is quite nice. And the remixes of the Three Houses theme are pretty heart pounding and intense, both in Japanese and American. Come to think of it, Three Houses has some other cool cuts. Fodlin Woods, Blue Skies in a Battle, The Apex of the World, both versions of The Edge of Dawn Seasons of Warfare, and the straight up Kingdom Hearts battle music that is tearing through heaven. Did it need to be 52 songs? Probably not. And I can't help but wonder how much of it was Sakurai's choice and how much Nintendo wanted in, given the general increase in prominence and popularity of Fire Emblem. But honestly, I had a very good time with the Fire Emblem soundtrack. Some of that can be tied to nostalgia from hearing these songs a lot in past Smash Brothers games, but it's still a very good soundtrack. I don't know if it's necessarily rushing me to go play Fire Emblem, because that franchise is in a genre that I don't really care all that much about, but the music is pretty damn good. Now, I want to end the Fire Emblem section of this with an anecdote. The last two soundtracks I listened to for this review were Tekken, which we'll get to later, and Fire Emblem. I listened to them around the time that Nintendo had a Nintendo Direct and Sony had a State of Play, where new entries in both franchises were announced. Not saying I willed anything into existence, but life works in mysterious ways. Also, you're welcome. All right, what's next? Uh, why did the Game & Watch series get its own section? Literally, it's only two songs. They combine to just over four minutes. Ice Climbers had their music lumped into the other categories, so what makes Mr. Game & Watch more deserving? Other than we have to acknowledge that the Game & Watch is a thing. What, is the Color TV game gonna get its own soundtrack next? And don't get it twisted, I love the two Game & Watch songs. Flat Zone 1 and 2, which are the two Game & Watch series stages that later combine to form Flat Zone X in later games, are great. Their deep-rooted old-school feel that's loaded with bleeps and bloops is super charming and incredibly memorable. But honestly, it's just weird to me to have a specific section for two songs. This probably could have been lumped into the other category and it wouldn't have made a difference. Oh well, they're good songs at least. Alright, first of the Brawl soundtracks, and it's a fairly short one, we have the Kid Icarus soundtrack. This is 13 songs stretching just 26 minutes, which I once again attribute to Kid Icarus having very few games. To my knowledge, I think there's only three, so understandable Sakurai was working with what he had. And I think he did a good job, especially with a set of music that can go in a couple different directions. For example, I I like the vibrant, plucky feeling of the Kid Icarus title theme remix. I think it mixes perfectly between these big, grandiose orchestrated sounds and some lighter 8-bit moments that throw things back to the retro sounds of the original game. It's a perfect tribute to a forgotten franchise in Nintendo's lineup. Also, my love of 8-bit music makes the Kid Icarus retro medley a real treat. It's a perfect blend of all the Kid Icarus music, and even as someone that never played the original game, I was able to pick out a few of the songs and melodies from their Smash remixes. It's nice to have a track like this that shows us where it all began for the game and its music. Smash's interpretations of the underworld and overworld music are also great. Very bold, very bright, and very adventurous. It sounds exactly as I would imagine the original games and music would if it was released in a modern time. Also, the decision to make a bit of the Kid Icarus Uprising music more rock influenced was surprising at first, but I think it does help set it apart from other more adventurous Nintendo music like that of Zelda. There are some songs that don't lean into it that much, like Magnus's theme and Wrath of the Reset Bomb, but tracks like the first boss fight music are made better by by their slick guitar integration, just as Dark Pit's theme benefits from the more plucky guitars. And the Destroyed Skyward track is also a beautiful vocal moment with some heavenly choirs to go with its dramatic feel. It gives me the vibe that something bad just happened and Pit has to go fix things before Hades takes over. Overall, Kid Icarus's music does a good job given that it only pulls from a small amount of games. There's enough epic stuff here to keep you interested. I don't think it's my absolute favorite soundtrack of the bunch, but what's here is good. Now, I can only hope those rumors of a 
a Kid Icarus Uprising Switch port are true. Next up, Wario. We've got another pretty quick one here as it's 11 tracks in 23 minutes. Not only that, but quite a few of the songs are both the English and Japanese versions, so there's not a whole lot of different stuff going on here. I'd like to point this out, but Wario has two separate franchises, Wario Land and Wario Where. Much of the music pulls from Wario Where with only one song coming from Wario Land. I don't mind this because I love the Wario Where franchise, but I might be one of the only few who doesn't really wish there was more Wario Land stuff. Either way, WarioWare is a franchise known for its chaotic nature and surrealism. Seriously, if you haven't played a WarioWare game, play one and you'll see what I mean. And plenty of its music carries that, but it also carries a more electronic old school vibe that often reminds you, yep, you're playing a video game. I think that makes sense with the series though. WarioWare has often been known for its meta elements and a lot of its storylines can even revolve around Nintendo platforms and peripherals. So it makes sense that the music would lean on the video game sound a lot. Like the opening WarioWare Inc. song definitely tells you right away, we're video game music and we're not ashamed. The WarioWare Inc. medley even more so, though it also has a lot of sudden beat switches that almost have the vibe of someone playing a video game and somehow switching their cartridge or disc in like half a second to start a whole new game. Don't try that at home, by the way. You'll probably break your system. The character themes move a bit away from the video game sound, but dive more into the chaos of the story. The jazzy and iconic Ashley song, the very dancey old school sounding Mike song, and the sunny Mona's Pizza song, the latter of which was honestly my least favorite of the character theme songs, even though I do indeed stan our favorite cheerleading pizza delivering queen Mona. Outside of that, the only Wario Land song is the Ruins music from Wario Land Shake It, which I'm not gonna lie, is a strong retro influenced bop. Very sunny and joyful with a sweet little bass groove to it that makes for a fun little throwback. The only other song here is from a game that I wasn't sure belonged to either series, but it's Gamer from Game & Wario, which is considered a WarioWare game, even though it feels more like a spin-off. Fitting to the imposing scary feel of the Gamer minigame in that title, where the main character has to play video games and not be caught by their mom. This song has a really dark, over-the-top vibe that does kind of creep me out a little. It's nothing incredible, but it's a solid addition from a pretty unmemorable game. All in all, the WarioWare music is great stuff. They probably could have added a bit more, like maybe something from Smooth Moves, but I think what they added here gets the point across regarding the chaotic vibes of the game series as well as its meta elements. It's pretty fun even if they could have done a little bit more and maybe given more than just the same song but one time in English and the other time in Japanese. Next up, the last of the first party franchises introduced in Brawl and another pretty short one, Pikmin. This one's only 14 tracks lasting 27 minutes and sonically it's probably the one I'd least expect to make sense in the context of Smash. Pikmin is not exactly too heavy with its music. In fact, I'd argue it's the exact opposite. Don't get it twisted. As much as I'm not a huge Pikmin fan, I love Pikmin music. But if you listen to it, it's got a very relaxed and mellow vibe that you wouldn't immediately think would play well in Super Smash Brothers with the fast-paced fighting and all. Understandably, some of the remixes, like the newly introduced remix of the Pikmin main theme, had to be redone to sound a lot heavier than their original forms. I respect the effort, but I'd much prefer the original songs. I know they don't fit, but the Pikmin music is generally good enough that I could take or leave some of the remixes. I'd much prefer the original version of the Pikmin main theme, which is here in the game, as I like how the more mysterious downbeat feel contributes to the game's concept of Captain Olimar landing on a strange planet and finding the Pikmin. And I'm glad the original Forest of Hope music is here too. That light feel is damn majestic, and I think there are enough swells and crescendos to capture that mysterious essence of the game nicely. Though, honestly, if Sakurai was really nervous about certain music not fitting in the vibe of Smash, like Minecraft, but we'll get to that later. I don't know if he thought more than twice about including a track on here called Environmental Noises, because the track is exactly that, two minutes of environmental noises. No music, just the kind of stuff that you play on your phone when you have insomnia and need calming noise to fall asleep to. It's nice noise, but why is it in Smash? And the fact that it's listed as a remix tells me that Sakurai consciously had someone record environmental noises specifically for Smash, and then just said, all right, let's lump it in with the Pikmin music. It'll work. It's just a very strange inclusion. There are other more mellow and lovely songs that I'm glad were included here, like a remix of the world map music from Pikmin 2, and the original version of the Garden of Hope music, though the remix isn't bad. Though, tracks like Flashes of Fear and Fragment of Hope veer away from the lighter sounds for a rather dark, dramatic vibe, almost reminiscent of a scary boss fight, and they honestly work really well. These songs hail from the spin-off Hey Pikmin, and it seems that game changed the music style up a lot. I don't know much about it, but at least it sounds good. Overall, the Pikmin music in Smash is a pretty good compilation of some greats from the series, with the obvious limitations that come with it. Songs obviously had to be 
omitted for being too light for Smash Bros, though apparently environmental noises need not apply, and it means the Pikmin soundtrack is a bit smaller than most. Even so, what's here is good stuff, and I think it's worth digging into not only the Pikmin songs in Smash, but the soundtracks from the base games themselves. Also, big W to the Pikmin community. This isn't in the script, but I'm very happy that you guys got your announcement of Pikmin 4 recently. It is about damn time. But on to the Smash 4 soundtracks we go, and the first one we have is a series you all are probably familiar with, Animal Crossing. Not a crazy long one here, 21 tracks hitting around 44 minutes, but we've got a lot of gems in the soundtrack. Animal Crossing is another franchise known for being a bit lighter in sound, so Smash did have to up the energy on quite a few songs here. I think it does work on tracks like the new title theme remixes, which move a lot faster, but still feel like they're fitting in the style the series is known for with the fast-paced drums and homey strings. Same with Go KK Rider, which mixes a lot of the same instrumental styles while integrating a lot of the computerized vocal sounds that the Animal Crossing franchise is known for. I think Smash 4's remix of the title theme from Wild World is one of my favorites in how it sticks pretty well to Animal Crossing's original vibe with a super cozy sound that you can just lay back and chill to. As far as songs that take it up a notch, the 2AM remix from Wild World is a banger. It has that vibe of going out on the town late at night and enjoying a nice party with an extra live performance from KK Slider. There's a great sense of bounciness to it that brings it up a notch in a series that's more known for lighter stuff, like the very whistly Town Hall and Tom Nook's Story remix from Wild World, which is just a sweet vibe of a track even when it ups the intensity a bit with the timpani. I also love the Roost remix from Wild World. It's so mellow and emotional with a very potent piano melody that almost feels like a slow dance. It's such a sweet, beautiful song that stands as possibly my favorite one here. I don't even play Animal Crossing, but I'd get into it for the music alone. Same with the Outdoors at 7pm slash Main Street remix from New Leaf. It's lush and light, but it still knows how to add some swell and excitement to make it a nice layered track. The Tour remix from New Leaf and the Tour de Mer Island medley are also appropriately bouncy and joyous, playing into the wholesome vibes that Animal Crossing are well known for. Bubblegum KK also appropriately mixes between the lighter, airier vibes while also being nicely fast-paced and proves to be an amazing combination that sticks out quite a bit among the many great tracks here. And near the end, we get a set of tunes from the legend himself, KK Slider. I honestly love this because I love the charm and goofiness of KK's computerized vocal tone in the context of all these instrumentals. My favorite would definitely be the acoustic KK Cruisin', but all of them are great in their own way. All in all, Animal Crossing has a great soundtrack, and it's been translated nicely to Smash Brothers as well. Even when they have to up the intensity a bit to fit the mood of the games, the songs succeed in spades. They still maintain some relaxed vibes, but also do a great job going a bit bigger. I'm no Animal Crossing player, but the series has some fantastic stuff, and it's worth checking out no matter how you feel about the franchise. Moving to a pretty wild one, we have the Wii Fit series. Some people might not even know that Wii Fit had multiple games, but yes, there were three of them. Even so, Wii Fit has 10 tracks across 22 minutes, which I owe to a combination of Wii Fit only having three games, and the latter entries, to my knowledge, reusing a lot of music. I say to my knowledge because I don't have quite as much experience with the latter two games, but I have a good amount of experience with the original. I still remember in 2008 being on a wild goose chase trying to find the game since almost every store was sold out of it. I still distinctly remember finally finding a store that had it, a Best Buy in New Jersey, and when we got it, the store was flooded with people buying Wiis and Wii Fit. Some might forget it, but the Wii and Wii Fit were cultural sensations. I've never been in a store on Black Friday, but being in that Best Buy gave me a fairly good idea. Minus the pushing and shoving, there luckily was none of that. So that experience with the game and nostalgia did have me kinda excited to go back in time with this soundtrack. Wii Fit's music tends to vary depending on the activity being done, but it generally falls in a bit on the lighter side, which is why the Wii Fit main menu remix threw me for a loop when it played. It really feels like they just said, shit, We Fit needs something a lot bigger for Smash, make something up. It sounds a bit out of place, and it's not something I'd beg to come back to like other songs in the series. Though I found the Super Hoop remix to be much better in that it manages to fit the energy of Smash while also being faithful to the original game. Trust me, I heard that song a lot from playing We Fit back in the day. This remix wouldn't have sounded out of place in the original game. And I have to say, having played a lot of We Fit back in the day, I got a good nostalgia burst from hearing the rhythm boxing music. I played the rhythm boxing game way too many times in my youth, so hearing the song again was a pleasure. Not only was it nostalgic, but it's just a bouncy and enjoyable track in its own right. Same goes with Yoga, which again Sakurai didn't seem to think too much about with the 
too relaxing for Smash thing. I'm cool with it though. It's the perfect kind of music to do yoga to, and I remember really loving it when I tried to do the yoga stuff in Wii Fit, because damn sure I tried. Was never good at it, but I tried. I hardly knew that Wii Fit Plus had a skateboard arena. I've only played a little of that game, but I think the remix that was used in the game was suitably energetic enough for the skate park vibe. I also love the mischievous Mulway music with its banjo plucking instrumental and whistling tone that gives me big time banjo kazooie vibes. I wasn't too familiar with this particular thing in Wii Fit Plus because I didn't really play it much, but it's good stuff. Though while the Wii Fit Plus music is largely good, the Wii Fit Plus medley sounds really messy at parts. Like, what was that vocalizing at the beginning? Are they trying to creep me into working out? Because that's all it sounds like. Though the only thing I'll say about the Wii Fit U music is that Core Luge sounds like the most intense music to be playing in what I've read is a balance game. Like, hey, keep your balance while we're screaming in your ear the entire time. It is a good song though. Almost sounds like a Splatoon song years before Splatoon would be a thing on anyone radar. All in all, the Wii Fit music is good stuff. There's not a ton of it for obvious reasons, but what's here feels like a good compiling of the game's most iconic music. There are a lot of good tracks here, and it's worth checking out for more than just a nostalgia burst. Alright, let's bang out another single-digit song playlist, Punch Out. Punch Out's playlist consists of just five tracks spread across ten minutes. Once again, there aren't that many games in the series, so it's not all that surprising, but this possibly could have been lumped into the other stuff. And don't get it twisted, there are several songs here that used to be meme fodder for my friends and I, that were still very un ironically good. Both minor circuit tracks are supremely entertaining, the jogging slash countdown music and its rock leading cousin the world circuit theme are satisfyingly epic, and the title theme for the Wii game is a perfect marriage of all these sounds into something that sets the mood right for that game. All of them carry that vibe of preparing yourself for an epic fight with a lot of highlight reel style music, fitting given Little Mac's journey and rise through the circuits to become the championship boxer. Once again though, with just five tracks, I don't know if this needed to be its own category, especially since since Punch-Out only has a few games and they only pull from two for these songs, if they threw them in with the other classic NES songs in the other category, I don't think there'd be many complaints. Oh well, it's still very good stuff. Last up for first party Nintendo franchises introduced in Smash 4, we have the Xenoblade series. This series got a bit of a boost thanks to Shulk's inclusion in Smash 4, and it's become a pretty big series. Xenoblade 3 just came out recently, I hope everyone's enjoying that. We've got a solid size track list too, 27 songs lasting an hour and 24 minutes. Not bad for a series that only have three games before and during Smash Ultimate's period of adding content. What's here is my favorite soundtrack of the bunch, but it's solid stuff. Xenoblade's music also takes on a very grand epic feel in line with the vast worlds of the Xenoblade franchise, but the songs also take on a bit of a rock sound while bringing some emotional edge as well. Engage the Enemy, for example, is extremely sweeping and vibrant, but it knows how to tone things up or down as it moves along. I also love the choir vocal harmonies on the back end that round it out perfectly. A lot of the soundtrack does seem to draw inspiration from the sounds of other RPGs like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, but it's for the best, as it's such a tried and true formula that makes for a still beautiful song that really ups the intensity of some of the battle-oriented moments in Xenoblade. Particular highlights for me include Time to Fight from the first game, the rock odysseys that are the Xenoblade Chronicles medley and You Will Know Our Names, the epic swashbuckling A Ship in a Stormy Sea, the battle music from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and the old-school feeling Tiger Tiger. I also love the calming vibes of the Gower Plane Night Track, which really bring me back to some of the more calming Kingdom Hearts music that I like. I think one of my only problems with the Xenoblade music is that it feels like it goes on a little too long for me in comparison to other soundtracks featured in Smash. Most soundtracks rely on songs being around a minute and a half to two minutes. With Xenoblade, a lot of the songs are three minutes with quite a few landing in the four to five minute range. While listening, it became easy to zone them out a bit because of the fact that they felt like they were going on for a pretty long time. Also, I noticed no Xenoblade Xenoblade Chronicles X music and why? Is that game the black sheep of the series? Either way, Xenoblade music is pretty solid stuff. It's not much that I would personally listen to on repeat like Mario or Zelda music, but it's excellent and it fits perfectly within its universe. We only have one first party series introduced in Smash Ultimate to go through, pre-DLC at least, but it's a good one. Splatoon. Feels fitting. We finally saw the release of Splatoon 3, which I've hardly gotten to play because I've been busy with the script. I'll get back to it soon. I desperately need to. Either way, 26 tracks across 45 minutes for a series with two games through 
throughout Smash Ultimate's lifespan from launch through the final DLC. Pretty good. And the Splatoon music as a whole is also pretty good. Splatoon music relies a lot on being over the top with a lot of heavy rock elements mixed with quirky vibes that fit perfectly with the bizarre concept. You're a kid in a squid who shoots paint. That and it fits with the almost rebellious kind of 90s Nick element of Splatoon. While I'm not as crazy about its remix, I do love the Splatoon theme song Splatack for its playfulness, intense horns and guitars, and fantastic drum beat. There's a lot going on here, but all of it blends together into something perfectly emphatic and quirky. Inker Sync is also fantastic, what with the vibrant rock feel as well as the bizarre vocal patterns that pop up later on. And there are plenty of songs that take on big, large-scale styles and stick the landing as fantastically catchy jams. There's the Seascape remix cracking up with its goofy vocal patterns, Split and Splat, which mixes rock with cute electronic pop sounds, Ink Me Up and I Am Octavio with their super technical vibes, and the epic electronic concert-like jam that is the Calamari Incantation. Even beyond those, I love the Bomb Rush Blush remix, Rip Entry, and Don't Slip. There are a lot of excellent, hard-ass songs here that definitely stand out compared to other first-party Nintendo soundtracks. My big issue with the setlist, though, is did we really need five different versions of Now or Never here? I mean, I get it. They have different things going on for them and all, and that's nice. But they still carry a lot of the same vibe, and it makes me wonder if we really needed all of them. Either way, the Splatoon soundtrack is a delight of weirdness that goes in a massively different direction than other Nintendo soundtracks, but succeeds in doing so. It's really great stuff that's definitely worth your time. And speaking of time, I really gotta get through this so I can get back to playing Splatoon 3. Now we're moving into third-party territory, the franchises that were not developed by Nintendo but were included in Smash as guests. Starting off with the first third-party franchise introduced back in Brawl, it's Metal Gear. I could just say Metal Gear Solid since a lot of what's here pulls from that, but I'll remind everyone that the original Metal Gear games exist. This particular soundtrack consists of 11 tracks across 25 minutes, which I have no familiarity with Metal Gear outside of Revengeance, so I don't know if the series is renowned for its music, but I'm surprised there's not more than this. Either way, much of the Metal Gear music is dramatic, but also rather subtle and spacey to emphasize the stealthy part of the franchise. Cavern, for example, is a beautiful piece of music with a slow burning feel that almost sounds like the kind of thing Metroid Prime later went on to do with its games. That said, it does tend to up the intensity on a track like the Encounter remix, which is really fitting. Snake spends much of his time sneaking, so when he's caught, his cover's blown and there's no reason to be subtle anymore. And beyond upping the drama and fitting the action, it just sounds really good too. That deep dun 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 is one of the most iconic refrains in gaming. I also love the deep, dark electronic vibes of Yell Dead Cell from Metal Gear Solid 2. It's a really pounding song that feels extremely action-influenced compared to a lot of what the first game's music did. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Snakey a beautifully dramatic cinematic cut that I only wish was able to feature the beautiful vocal version on here. All they have are two instrumental versions, which is kind of sad, but at least those instrumentals are amazing. And at least we got some beautiful vocals on the track Calling to the Night from Portable Ops, which is a show-stopping stunner of a track. Honestly, it might be my favorite one here. I also don't know why I thought the MGS4 theme of love was going to be like a pirate song when it started. For some reason, the way the strings move along with the pounding timpani in such a swashbuck way made me think that MGS4 as a game was one big high seas adventure. If it is, let me know in the comments, but pirate jokes aside, it's a great song. Very cinematic, which fits the vibe of Metal Gear Solid 4 perfectly because I've heard from many people that that game is basically movie Gear Solid 4. I know I made the joke about reminding everyone that the original Metal Gear games exist, but Smash Ultimate does do that. The first two tracks, the theme of Tara and theme of Solid Snake, both derive from the original Metal Gear games. They're good songs, but more importantly, I respect that these games are also mentioned along alongside the Metal Gear Solid music preserving the history and all that. All in all, despite the short length, this is a solidly comprehensive set of Metal Gear music. A lot of great stuff, and I feel like there could have been more if Konami was willing to budge. We know they never are, though, unless it's on Pachinko. Yeah, that's right, I had to make a Pachinko joke, sorry. And now we're about to go into a bit of nerding out mode, because the next third-party franchise and the last one introduced in Brawl is the Sonic series. I've grown up with Sonic, and I've been playing it for almost as long as I've been able to hold a controller. Sonic music is some of the best shit ever, and the set of content here, which lasts 20 tracks across 42 minutes is brilliant stuff. Fun fact, by the way, while writing out this particular part of the script and listening to these songs, I was actually playing Sonic Adventure again. That's a game I'll always have a close attachment to. It's still great fun, and it was my first Sonic the Hedgehog game. But back to the music, we have a pretty complete collection of some of Sonic's most iconic tunes from both the 2D and 3D era. Green Hill Zone's still one of my all-time favorite songs in any video game. Super bright and sunny, and a track I feel like I can never get enough of. Scrap Brain Zone, same thing, very bright but still technological feel that I think is amazing 
amazing. Emerald Hill Zone carries a lot of what made Green Hill such a good song, but that super deep, groovy bass line is amazing and really adds to the fast-paced vibe. Sonic Boom is where we start to get into the vocal themes, and while it's not my favorite, it's still a super crisp rock song with a pretty catchy chorus. The remix of Angel Island Zone was also very faithful to the original, with deeper rock guitars that still carry that old-school feel nicely. You could have told me this was the original song, and I would have believed it. I'm not quite as crazy about Supersonic Racing despite its iconic status, but I could see how it fits in with the fast vibe of Sonic R as a racing game. I'll also say that despite hailing from the Sonic games I grew up on, Open Your Heart and Live and Learn ironically aren't my favorite Sonic vocal themes. Hell, one of my favorites, Endless Possibilities, is not even here. They're both pretty epic rock songs that Sonic has always been known for, and I definitely agree with them being so popular. I just don't go back to them as much as some others. They still are amazing songs and work perfectly in the context of the epic confrontations in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. If anything, I'm glad that Escape from the City is in Smash. Maybe that's a cliche pick for some, but it's just such an amazing song that I can never get out of my head. That throbbing guitar, super sticky hook, the emphatic lyrics, it's just too good. It might also help that despite my general feelings on how Sonic Adventure 2 is aged, the City Escape level is one of my favorites. I really like a lot of first levels in games, and City Escape is so much fun. I'm also glad the Sonic Heroes theme is here. Despite that game being a bit rough today, it's got some fantastic music, and the Sonic Heroes theme is one that definitely gets into my head a lot. Every time I'd boot up the game, that song pumped me up a lot, and it still does. It's also cool that his world is here, at least in instrumental form, as Sonic 06 has some goaded music despite its notoriously bad quality, though I do wish the original version was here and not one of the remixes. The only pace breakers for me were Seven Rings in Hand and Night of the Wind. Both are not bad, but they don't hit the same for me as some of the other vocal themes, though that may be because the storybook series is one of my least favorite Sonic offshoots. And honestly, it's not too bad because Reach for the Stars is here. That's by far my favorite Sonic vocal theme, what with its bright electronic and rock instrumental blend, lovely vocals, and super memorable hooks. It's in my eyes the quintessential Sonic song and still easily my favorite of the bunch. The rest of what we have here is almost all level themes, but I'm glad we got some good ones. Rooftop Run from Unleashed, specifically the Generations version of it. Wonder World, the theme from Sonic Lost World. I love those pianos. Windy Hill Zone 1 from Lost World, which is super sunny and upbeat. Lights, Camera, Action, the theme of Studiopolis Zone Act 1 in Sonic Mania, a jazzy synth-filled banger. And Sunset Heights from Sonic Forces, which has a super vibrant synth feel that blends with the rock sounds nicely. There is also one last vocal theme that was included, and that's Fist Bump from Sonic Forces. I do think the song is a really strong rock banger, but honestly, a lot of my enjoyment of it comes from its meme status. Back when Forces came out, the song was used a lot in memes, and it's honestly really great in that regard. I can't not hear Together We Can Show the World What We Can Do without imagining, like, an Ed, Ed and Eddie video that the song was placed over. It's still a good song, though, and I'm glad to see it was included here. Overall, Sonic music is always a blast to listen to. Even with the fact that the series is constantly of inconsistent quality, I can always rely on Sonic to bring out some kick-ass music. Whether it's level themes that are bright and bursting with flavor that liven up the day, or hard rocking tracks that bring the faster vibe Sonic is known for, his music is always amazing. And I'll always be a fan of the series, even for its massive ups and downs. Can't wait to see what Sonic Frontiers does later this year. Now let's jump into the first third-party franchise introduced in Smash 4, Mega Man. With the fact that Capcom just doesn't seem to care all that much about Mega Man anymore, it was a treat when he got announced as a fighter for Smash Bros. I don't even play the Mega Man franchise and I was excited. And we've got a healthy amount of music here too. 31 tracks lasting an hour and 11 minutes. And though there's a lot here and some of it can blend together a little, this is a nice soundtrack. Mega Man music when it wants to can pretty much relish in its old school 8-bit nature. Even though a vast majority of what's here is either remixes or medleys, many tracks still carry a bit of that classic vibe with 8-bit electronic sound effects. The songs do often have some bright rock vibes, which makes sense given that the series is called Rockman in Japan, and there's another character named Bass throughout the franchise. I was digging the brighter feel of the Cutman stage, the old school technical elements of the Bomb Man stage, and the Mega Man 2 medley that mixes the rock sound with a bunch of old school 8-bit instrumentals for a perfect marriage. As far as other high points, I really enjoyed the beachy rock vibes of tracks like the Air Man stage and Top Man stage, the bustling energy coming from the Crash Man stage, and the epic guitar-filled jams that are the Flash Man stage and the Spark Man stage. As far as the songs that take things down the 8-bit route more, I really enjoyed Flash in the Dark, the first Dr. Wily stage from Mega Man 9, and the set of retro medleys that are all fantastic. I'd honestly have liked a few more of those, but I'm not losing sleep over it because the soundtrack as a whole is solid stuff. Also, I feel like a lot of people would have been content if the soundtrack was just the numbered games, but it's nice that the last few tracks on the Mega Man soundtrack are from the X series. It's a nice addition, and the songs themselves succeed for a lot of the same reason as the tracks from the numbered entries. Special shout out to X vs. Zero. All in all, the Mega Man soundtrack is pretty good. I don't have nearly as much of a connection to Mega Man as others do, 
too, so I don't know how popular these are with the fans. But to me, these are awesome songs to jam out to, and they fit well in the vibe of both Mega Man and Smash. Now, if only Capcom actually care about this franchise a bit. Moving on, last of these Smash 4 on-disc third-party universes, since some were introduced as downloadable content, Pac-Man. 11 tracks across 26 minutes here, which surprised me a little because Bandai Namco co-developed this game and Pac-Man is their character. You'd expect more. What's also disappointing is that all the music either pulls from old school Pac-Man stuff or old school Namco games. That's fine and all, those are good songs, but no love for Pac-Man World? Come on, at least I finally got a remake. The best way to describe the music included here is bleep bloop. A lot of deep 8-bit electronic stuff regardless of whether we're talking about remixes or not. Now I don't mind that because there's a fun little charm to a lot of the songs here that have such a deep-rooted arcade feel, like the Pac-Man remix song, the slightly more rock-twinged Pac-Man's Park slash Block Town, the bright and bubbly Metro Cross Retro Medley, and the amazing Namco Arcade 80s Retro Medleys. I prefer the first over the second. The only sad thing is that the lack of Pac-Man music from anything other than the original game can make the songs kind of blend together just a bit. I love this style of music and I think they did great with it here, but they could have diversified it a little more with some Pac-Man world songs, for example. All in all, though, it's a nice little blast from the past that throws back nicely to the arcade days. We've still got some third-party franchises to talk about that were introduced in Smash 4, but these ones were introduced through downloadable content. The first of them is an all-time legend, Street Fighter. We've got a lot here, 38 tracks across 50 minutes, and I think the Street Fighter set of music is some of my favorite stuff here. More so than Capcom's other represented franchise, Mega Man, Street Fighter leans extremely hard into the 8-bit sounds. The first few tracks, Ryu Stage, Ken Stage, Vega Stage, and the legendary Guile stage all have some new school instrumentation, but mix it with some old school sounds to give this a bit of a feel of the original Street Fighter games. It's great stuff though, a lot of swells and bombast that give it a sweeping epic feel to prepare you nicely for some epic battles. And in the case of Guile's theme, I mean, if you don't like this song, you're entitled to your opinion, but I don't know if I could trust you. From there, pretty much the rest of the soundtrack is ripped straight from Street Fighter 2 with the Type A and Type B of every character's stage. Basically, Type A is the version from the original Street Fighter 2, while Type B hails from Super Street Fighter 2. Thus, all the music carries that super compressed 8-bit feel to it, which I love. As far as the Type A's go, my favorite Stage A themes are Ryu, E. Honda, Chun-Li, Guile, of course, Saget, and DJ. While my favorite Type B Stage themes are, well, Pretty much everyone I said with Type A just add Ken, Vega, and Kami. Yeah, for some reason I like their Super Street Fighter 2 versions more than the original. Maybe just having a wider soundscape of instrumentals helped with that. Also, Guile's Type B version is my favorite version of his theme. Just saying. All in all, I'm very happy with how the Street Fighter music was handled, even as someone that doesn't play a whole lot of Street Fighter. I know some people might consider it lazy that they just ported in a lot of the music from the original, but honestly, I think that was the part I was happiest about with it. I like that we got to have it without a lot of unnecessary remixes that could make or break the quality of the original songs. It felt the most faithful to the source material, and the 8-bit sound of it never got old to me. Having the original music was a fantastic idea, and I'm very happy with it. Moving right along, we have the Final Fantasy series. Despite the iconic long running status of the franchise, we only have 11 tracks and about 33 minutes worth of music here. A little more on that later with a few other franchises, but beyond potential stinginess, I'm wagering a guess that the track list is small because all of it pulls specifically from Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, a CGI film based in the FF7 universe. After all, the two Final Fantasy characters in the game, Cloud and Sephiroth, both specifically come from Seven, so they don't need to pressure themselves to do a comprehensive look through all of Final Fantasy's music. I don't mind the focus on FF7 though, as FF7 Remake is the only Final Fantasy game I've played and beaten, and it's one of my top 15 favorite games. Having FF7 be the main source of the music is honestly the best news for me. Though that's obviously not to say that other Final Fantasy music is bad. I love the remix of the opening bombing mission. It captures the feel of the original game in FF7 Remake perfectly, and really sets up the vibe that it's going to be an incredible, action-packed, and exciting journey. Same goes for Let the Battles Begin, which also brings that phenomenal, grandiose vibe perfectly especially in the context of an intense battle. When it comes to Square Enix, I expect great music and FF7 delivers that in spades. The deep bass groove and fast-paced drums on Fight On are also amazing, mixed in nicely with excellent guitars that give it an amazing rock vibe. Changing things up entirely, the remix of Aerith's theme is a sweeping heavenly moment with bombastic instrumentation and some lovely choir vocals that give it more of an emotional sound. Fitting in with some of the more emotional moments in the game that I won't spoil, even though it's two decades old. There are also some super dramatic and fast-paced 
sounds going on in the track Genova, whose only big flaw is that it's over so soon. It's so multifaceted and layered with an action-packed soundscape that still has some nice lighter moments that make it a perfect marriage. And of course, I can't not mention One Winged Angel, the theme of Sephiroth. Being such a dangerous villain means that Sephiroth gets a fittingly sinister theme song. It's a heart-pounding track that never takes a minute to give you a break, and that's the best part of it. When you're introducing a villain, you want them to have a super dark song, and One Winged Angel does that for Sephiroth. The Advent Children rendition of it is also quite good, with heavier guitars that play into the Rock Odyssey vibes of that film's soundtrack. All in all, yeah, Final Fantasy music, we know by this point it's amazing, and the stuff that's included in this game is pretty damn incredible. I do understand they could have done a little bit more, but as far as representing Final Fantasy VII, I think they did it a lot of justice. Can't wait for FF7 Rebirth. And the last of all the Smash 4 franchises introduced, we have Bayonetta. I'm sure this isn't the first franchise I can say this about, but Bayonetta got a massive boost by her inclusion in Smash. That said, her soundtrack comes in rather light at 11 tracks and 34 minutes, though it's certainly not lacking in energy. Bayonetta's music is certainly action-packed, but it takes on a much more jazz influence feel that sets it apart from a lot of the other franchises here. The first track, a remix of the theme from Bayonetta, Mysterious Destiny, is very lavish, full of beautiful pianos and saxophones that make you want to kick ass, but also dance. I feel this vibe just as well from tracks like Rider of the Light, Let's Hit the Climax, Let's Dance Boys, and the Bayonetta 2 theme remix, Tomorrow is Mine, which is a fantastic jam with sticky melodies and plenty of emphatic instrumentation, especially in the horns. Time for the Climax is also a brilliant song, almost like the culmination of everything Bayonetta music tries to do in one neat package. But there's still plenty of room for more straight-up dramatic action-oriented songs like One of a Kind and Afterburner Infinity Climax Mix, the latter of which is by far one of my favorites on here despite its five-minute length. There's not a whole lot of it, but Bayonetta music in Smash Ultimate is a good overall compilation. Plenty of beautiful songs that fit Bayonetta extremely well, and I think they did a great job with it. Now I sit and wait patiently for Bayonetta 3. It's so close. From here on out, we have almost nothing but third-party franchises introduced in Smash Ultimate, but this is the only one pre-DLC, Castlevania. Healthy amount of music here with 34 tracks at an hour and 13 minutes, and it's a pretty well-compiled selection of music that should be pretty fan-pleasing stuff. Emphasis on should, because I don't know the first thing about Castlevania, so I might be missing the train a bit here. Castlevania music tends to be heavy and very rock-esque, but also carries a lot of elements of classical music. Vampire Killer, for example, has a rock-oriented vibe, but also carries a mysterious air to it with some potent pianos. It feels like it's blending the rock feeling with something of a haunted house feel, which makes sense within the game's world. I also like how fast paced out of time was. The drummer was going ham on this one. A lot of ride cymbals and epic crashes. Nothing to Lose is also cool for its thrashing sound that feels pretty metal, which makes sense in the context of its gothic horror concepts and vampire-based storytelling. I also definitely dig the epic guitar-driven feel of the Bloody Tears slash Monster Dance remix with its massive guitars. Hail from the Past with its very luscious sounds that feel very desert-like, which which is fitting because from my research it hails from a level that takes place in an Egyptian desert, and the epic Divine Bloodlines which sounds like a Kingdom Hearts battle theme years before there was even a such thing as a Kingdom Hearts. There are also a lot of tracks that mix modern instrumentation with a bit of a classical feel which I greatly enjoy. I noticed this on the Beginning and Aquarius remixes from Castlevania 3, and the Iron Blue Intention remix from Castlevania Bloodlines as well. As always I'm happy when they pull from the classic games, especially when we get some old school sounds like on Dwelling of Doom from Castlevania 2, the Simon Belmont theme from Castlevania 4, and Jet Black Incursion from Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, which isn't exactly an old school game, but the song feels old school. And while it's not my favorite song here, I have to give credit for the inclusion of Go Getsu Fuma, a song from the Famicom game Getsu Fuma Den that was essentially the precursor to Castlevania. That's something I have to give props for. Gaming history preservation is awesome. That said, I don't know if I love this soundtrack. It's very well composed stuff, and the job of compiling so much from across the series is fantastic, but I feel like this is one of those you had to be there things. As someone with not a lick of knowledge or expertise on Castlevania, some of it didn't grab me as much as the soundtracks of other games. That does make me want to ask any of my Castlevania fans in the audience, is this series revered for its music? It's good, but I don't find it as memorable as some of the other soundtracks here. But that's just me, you might like it a lot more, and to that I say... Have a great time with it. Now on to the Smash Ultimate DLC franchises, we have a lot to cover. Let's start off with the Persona franchise, which weighs in with 11 tracks at about 30 minutes. Not a whole lot of stuff, but a good portion of the series is represented here, even if a lot of that pulls from Persona 5, understandably. Last surprise, the first song here is one of the franchise's most iconic already. A jazz-oriented vocal theme with lovely singing and an incredibly memorable song that feels pretty fitting with the more supernatural Persona-based parts of well, Persona. Persona 5 music relies on a lot of very jazzy vocal themes with pretty much all of them being 
just that. Jazz, pianos, groovy bass lines, and lovely vocals. A lot of them follow the same sound, which can make it a bit repetitive, but the songs themselves are done so well that it doesn't get old. Beneath the Mask, Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There, Rivers in the Desert, all tracks that carry the similar vibe, but don't lose their luster in the process. There are some tracks that do break up the monotony a bit, though. I really love the celebratory and boastful hour beginning, which has a very bright, sunny feel, but also layers in rock sounds here and there to great effect. Also, interestingly, despite Joker hailing from Persona 5, we do get some songs from Persona 4 and 3, which, even though I don't play Persona, I'm happy with because that means we get some fantastic stuff. From Persona 4, there's the extremely sticky rock jam Reach Out to the Truth and the beautiful piano-driven rock odyssey that is I'll Face Myself, the new remix that is. And from Persona 3, there's Mass Destruction, which is a boastful song with great vocals that almost sound Gwen Stefani-esque. Even the final song, Aria of the Soul, while not my favorite, is respectable because it pulls from the franchise's first entry, Revelations Persona. It's a fantastic ode to a very popular and beloved series, and I'm very happy with how the Persona music turned out here. I did worry it would get stale pretty fast, but it never did. Kudos to Sakurai and the team for doing an excellent compiling job. Believe it or not, we do have a third-party series whose set list lands in the single digits, and that's Dragon Quest. With this franchise, there are only eight tracks stretching 14 minutes. I'm not sure what made the set list so short, though I think I've heard Square Enix may have been a bit stingy with providing DLC music for its franchises. I mentioned Final Fantasy only having 11 tracks, and we'll have more to say in a bit. Either way, Dragon Quest music fits in a lot with the adventurous, epic spirit that you'd expect out of an RPG. Not not surprisingly, given that these franchises ran simultaneously to each other and its publishers have merged, a lot of the Dragon Quest music does remind me of Final Fantasy, even though I'm aware that yes, Dragon Quest came first. I'm not familiar with Dragon Quest as a series, I've never played any of the games, but there's still plenty of great stuff here. I like the Dragon Quest 3 song, Adventure, and tracks like Fighting Spirits and the Dragon Quest 4 song, Battle for the Glory, set up the battling aspect of the game very well. Wagon's Wheel March has an excellent... <clears throat> marching band vibe to it that I really like. I was in a marching band, I can't help myself. And the Dragon Quest XI song, The Hero Goes Forth With A Determination, might be my favorite out of all of them for its vibrant feel and bounciness. Sadly, this is another case where I feel like there's just not enough here to make an impression. The music as a whole is very good, but it's just eight tracks, not enough of it lasts for me. I don't blame Nintendo or Sakurai for this. I understand with third parties, you're kind of naturally behind the eight ball because you just have to put your hands together and hope they give you something. So I don't blame the Smash team for not doing enough. I blame Square Enix for being stingy with the music. Not only are there only eight songs, but it's two per game from four games out of the 11 mainline entries in the Dragon Quest series. They had a perfect opportunity to put in more, but just fumbled it. What's here is good, but Square could have done a lot more to help them out. As well, we've got a franchise near and dear to me to talk about next, and that's Banjo-Kazooie. Sure, the first game is the only one I actually liked, sorry, but I love these characters and was over the moon seeing them come back for Smash Ultimate. Also, such a massive moment. Banjo and Kazooie were back on a Nintendo console for the first time in almost two decades, and their inclusion meant that a Microsoft-owned character got to make it into Smash. Xbox characters could make it into a Nintendo game. The possibilities were endless, and the only thing we got from that was Minecraft Steve, but hey, something's better than nothing. As far as music, there's not a ton with just 10 tracks across 24 minutes, but that's kind of expected from a franchise with just three games that's been dormant since 2008. Much of the music also pulls from the first game, with three coming from Banjo-Tooie, and nothing coming from the one that's not really a Banjo-Kazooie game, but we call it one for content continuity sake, nuts and bolts. This isn't too much of a bother to me though, the original Banjo-Kazooie is a favorite of mine and the other titles didn't do nearly as much for me, so I'm happy to take a lot of stuff from the original and it so happens that the original just has a lot of fantastic music. Much of the music is also remixed, but I don't mind it because tracks like the main theme from the original game, Mumbo's Mountain, Mad Monster Mansion, and Treasure Trove Cove, especially Treasure Trove Cove, do a fantastic job capturing the chaotic vibe of the series excellently. A lot of fast-paced horns, pianos, marimbas, and of course, banjos throughout different points of these songs keep them extremely close to their original forms while giving them a fresh flavor. Even the Versus King remix from Tui is a pretty damn faithful recreation. Some songs are preserved in their original forms though, like the excellent Freeze Easy Peak, the wonderfully quirky Versus Mr. Patch song from Banjo Tui, and the epic confrontational Versus Lord Wu Fak Fak. Wow, that's a wild name. It's great to see this series make it into Smash at all, and the job they did with compiling music is fantastic. Could there have been a few more original tracks? Sure, but what's here sounds great, and the remixes feel very fitting to the legacy of Banjo-Kazooie. Now, let's hope Microsoft can make a new Banjo-Kazooie game already. The next one's a little funny, and that's the Fatal Fury franchise. The franchise itself isn't the funny part. If anything, it's a cool piece of gaming history to break.
bring in. The funny part is the amount of content here. 50 tracks stretching an hour and 48 minutes for a franchise that, okay, maybe it's just me, but I hardly knew what Fatal Fury was before Terry made it in Smash. Hell, I would have known it more if you put King of Fighters instead of Fatal Fury. But there's a reason there are 50 tracks here, and it's pretty funny. When Sakurai was working with Fatal Fury's publisher, SNK, on getting Terry in, he sent them a list of 50 song choices, expecting them to narrow it down to about 10 or 20. Instead, SNK agreed to them all, and while Sakurai was probably taken aback, he went with it. So I hope you like Fatal Fury music because you're getting a lot of it. Before going in, I was like, this better be damn good if it's got 50 tracks. And I'll let you in on a secret. I didn't listen to these soundtracks in order. Essentially, I listened to everything up to Star Fox in order, but then pulled a shortest to longest thing with the rest. That might have messed up my feelings on the Fatal Fury soundtrack as I listened to it right after the Tekken soundtrack. More on that later. As a result, the songs did at times feel like they blended together for me. As much as I was able to appreciate the Brazilian instrumentation on the remix of Harimer Faith Capoeira School Song of the Fight Believers Will Be Solved, God, what a long name, I was already kind of getting deja vu by that point. There are quite a few songs I did like. I appreciate how tracks like The Sea Knows, the original version of Kurikintan, The Working Matador, Soy Sauce for Geese, and the fantastically named A New Poem That the South Thailand Wants to Tell took on the retro sounds that you'd expect from an old school Neo Geo game. But hearing the soundtrack after Street Fighter and Tekken's might have ruined the experience just a tiny bit for me. And I feel bad for saying that because I know that Fatal Fury predates Tekken so the latter would be more liable to use sounds that Fatal Fury helped popularize. But even with that, there wasn't quite as much that grabbed me in the same way off of Fatal Fury soundtrack. Granted, there were some cool remixes here and there, like the fantastic rock remix of the London March from Fatal Fury 2, the jazzy 11th Street remix from Fatal Fury Wild Ambition, the rock-oriented remix of Soy Sauce for Geese from King of Fighters 14, the old-school jazz fest that is 176th Street from King of Fighters 99, which is easily a favorite of mine, and the hard rock-themed Desert Requiem Operation O2UM from King of Fighters 95. I hope I said that right. And when you have a soundtrack with this many tracks, there are bound to be even more highlights. There's the very bright, energetic, old-school feel of KD0079 Plus from King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited Match, the swingy Terry 115 from King of Fighters 2000, and the throbbing guitar riffs of Undercover from King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited Match. It's also pretty cool that outside of including Fatal Fury and King of Fighters songs, this soundtrack also includes songs from other SNK games like Athena, Psycho Soldier, Art of Fighting, Samurai Showdown, and Metal Slug. Out of those songs, I really like Forest World from Athena, Gaia from Samurai Showdown, the main theme from Metal Slug, the assault theme from the first three Metal Slug games, and Final Attack from the first six Metal Slug games. So all in all, the Fatal Fury soundtrack was good. There were quite a few solid high points and a solid amount of representation on the Fatal Fury front. 50 songs good? No. 20 songs good? Probably. Yeah, I can't say I wasn't entertained by the soundtrack, but it definitely felt like it went on just a bit too long. I don't blame Sakurai or his team for that, though, because this almost feels like an accident. Sakurai sent a list of songs he had as ideas, not knowing SNK would send it back with check marks next to all of them. I don't know how different the setlist would have looked without that, but regardless, this is a case of a great 20 song setlist wrapped in a decent 50 song setlist. The overall quality remains solid, though, and if you have any interest or appreciation in Fatal Fury or SNK, you'll love this. But wait, we have one more first party franchise that was introduced through DLC to talk about. It's ordered with the DLCs instead of the other first party stuff, but nevertheless, it's the ARMS franchise. Or rather, I guess I should just say ARMS because there's only one game in that franchise. Either way, we've got 18 tracks that last about 29 and a half minutes, though I'm not sure I'm as in love with this soundtrack as much as many of the other games here. The opening ARMS Grand Prix official theme song remix makes a good first impression as an epic pounding song with some nice vocals that get you in in the mood for battle, but a lot of the music largely sticks in that direction across the duration of the track list. It's not bad, and there are definitely some highlights like Ribbon Ring, Mausoleum, Ninja College, Via Dolce, Versus Headlock, and especially the quirky sounding Scrapyard, and pretty much everything here does sound good, but the thing is, it just doesn't feel as distinct or interesting to me. I almost feel like my feelings on the music mirror my feelings on ARMS as a game. It's good, but I didn't really fall in love with it the way I hoped I would, and while it certainly had potential, it didn't reach the top of the line that other Nintendo games reach. Same goes for the music. It's good, enjoyable stuff when it's on, but it's not the kind of soundtrack I'm begging to return to in the same way as other Nintendo soundtracks. Okay, now let's talk about maybe one of my bigger disappointments with a third-party soundtrack, 
Minecraft. Now, let me make this clear. I do not play Minecraft, but I believe that Minecraft music is some of the greatest in video games ever, point blank, period. However, Sakurai noted that the game did not use much of it for one reason. Minecraft music is notoriously low-key and downbeat, a vibe that doesn't fit with Smash. So he decided not to pull some songs from the original game as a result, which is fine, but environmental noises is okay? Okay, I'm getting off track, but as a result of this, Minecraft is just seven tracks stretching just under 19 minutes. To my surprise, four of the tracks do come from the original game, but almost all the songs here are new remixes. There are two tracks from Minecraft Dungeons, one from Minecraft Earth, and four from the original game, three of which are new remixes. Most of these tracks don't stick out to me as much just because they don't fit with what I would have thought the Minecraft vibe would be. Granted, this could just be the fact that I've only played Minecraft a grand total of three times in in my life, but a lot of what's here is going for a much bigger vibe than what the series is about. I get why, but Minecraft's appeal to me has always been the quiet simplicity of everything, so the music that's here detracts from that. That doesn't mean there aren't beautiful moments. Earth from Minecraft Earth still packs enough lovely emotion into it to be satisfying despite its faster pace. Toys on a Tear has a very playful vibe aided by the excellent use of marimbas, and Dance of the Blocks mixes its energy with some very nice pianos. Sadly, again, there's just not enough here, and what is here doesn't feel like it's the best of Minecraft. I don't know if that's the result of Microsoft not offering enough or Sakurai not nudging harder for some other songs that fit the Minecraft vibe a bit more, but ultimately it's just kind of disappointing. It's not bad, but when you have a soundtrack like Minecraft's, you can do a little bit better. We've got one more fighting game franchise to talk about, and I've mentioned it a couple times already, that's Tekken. Given the Bandai Namco connection, I'm not surprised to see that they gave their flagship franchise so much music, even though they told Pac-Man to piss off, as this set list lasts 39 tracks stretching an hour and a half. And Tekken just despite its epic fighting mechanics, can at times go for something a bit electronic and brighter with its sound. It's almost like Tekken, at least early on, went for the old school sound just like Street Fighter did, but as it was created in the 3D era, it had a wider range of sounds and styles it could pull from in comparison to the 2D era Street Fighter soundtrack. Marine Stadium Japan, for example, has a very upbeat energy to it, but it's a bit more spacey and colorful in its soundscape. Same with Chicago USA with its deeper bassline and general groovy, almost lighthearted feel. Kyoto Japan also shares a luscious, vibrant feel, though the soundtrack does go for something a bit darker when we land at Heihachi Mishima, the King of Iron Fist from Tekken 2. Almost like it sets up Heihachi to be an epic encounter of a fight, thus upping the intensity. And it stays that way with Kazuya Mishima, Devil Kazuya, especially on the Rock Twinge remix, which beyond being a great track makes sense. I haven't really played Tekken, but I assume the more epic feel of those tracks sets up how facing off against the Mishimas, who are basically the face of Tekken, are bound to be epic epic confrontations. From my reading, there's also elements of familial anger and discontent between Heihachi and Kazuya, the father and son, and with Kazuya having the devil gene, it makes sense that the darker stuff would come in the form of their music. I feel like Emotionless Passion, which is a big favor of mine, kind of blends the two styles together, with some darker elements, but a generally lighter, even sunnier vibe to it that feels like an excellent combination. It feels like the soundtracks were constantly changing, though. Once we got to a track Embu, Character Select, Huarang, and the Jin and Heihachi themes from Tekken 3, which are all great. I noticed the more reverb-driven rock feel and started wondering, is Tekken 4 soundtrack gonna go country next? In actuality, it obviously doesn't, but I was also happy to see that Tekken Tag Tournament's music got some rep here. Let me say, the electronic, epic, emotional opening movie soundtrack is absolutely incredible, and that electro groove on the Jin stage song is fantastic. And while country wasn't in the cards for Tekken 4, we did get a very nice, almost jazzy about face on the track Kitsch, and the track Bit Crusher almost sounds like it came straight from an old-school black-and-white comic book movie. Tekken 5 moves back to something with a more futuristic electronic sound on tracks like Red Hot Fist and Moonlit Wilderness, though my favorite of them has to be Poolside. I love how bright and intense it is with such a pleasantness that I wouldn't think would fit in a game like Tekken, but hey, it's here and I'm glad. The series does begin to rock out again when we get to Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection with the fantastic Snow Castle before changing back into the experimental Into Nirvana and returning to the dancey electronic sounds with Resurrection. By the time we reach Tekken 6, we had that similar diversity of sounds, rock on Ethno Evening, lighter and pluckier strings on Yuki, and the rougher, almost grungier experimental electronic jam that is only one fight. The rest of the soundtrack also swings wildly between those two pendulums. With Tekken 6 Blood Rebellion, we have rock on Dis Thins Out and Arisa, the latter of which goes heavy with the fiddles, electronic on Karma, and a more horn-driven yodel-filled song in 
yodeling on Meadow Hill. With Tekken Tag Tournament 2, we have full-blown electronic dance pop club bangers on Abyss of Time and Plucking Turnips, and a grand and airy vocal theme in Landscape under the Ghost Kamenano. Sakurai even included music from the free-to-play game Tekken Revolution, where we got the 90s rock-esque New World Order, which is definitely a huge favorite of mine, and another more experimental track with No Easy Way Out. Of course, we round out with Tekken 7, where the songs seem to have a mixture of the electronic and rock sounds. It's not my favorite of what's here, but my top picks from it would have to be Heat Haze Shadow, Duomio Di Sirio first, and Moonsiders first, the latter of which just really warms my heart when I hear it. I just noticed I mentioned almost every track here. Truthfully, with how long this section went, I debated cutting some parts, but I decided not to because I just didn't expect to enjoy Tekken music as much as I did. It seems like the series sacrifices a unified sound for an amalgamation of styles, but ultimately it pretty much sticks the landing every time. I was very impressed. And honestly, maybe I was loving the soundtrack so much because I listened to it on the day that Tekken 8 got a trailer at PlayStation State of Play. Hey, I don't play the series, but that trailer looked incredible. Definitely looking forward to that game. And the last proper series to be represented in this game is another one that's pretty near and dear to me, Kingdom Hearts. You guys have seen me wearing my Kingdom Hearts shirt in these videos. You know I love the series. And Kingdom Hearts music is some of my personal favorite in video games. So I was happy to see anything Kingdom Hearts related get into this game, let alone Sora himself. But once again, that supposed Square Enix stinginess bled into the soundtrack as we only have 10 tracks lasting under 17 minutes. And one of those songs doesn't even come with downloading Sora. The swing version of Dearly Beloved is only available if you have a save file of Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory on your Switch. I don't as I played the game on PlayStation, meaning I had to find the song on the internet. Spoiler alert, it's solid, but the original Dearly Beloved is a classic, so it doesn't quite live up to that. As for the rest of what's here, I do understand why some of my personal favorites couldn't make it. Tracks like Destiny Islands, Traverse Town, and Twilight Town are too out of the vibe to fit here, so they were naturally excluded. That doesn't mean Sakurai and his team didn't get some good stuff, because they sure did. There are a lot of intense battle-focused songs on here, and when we kick off with Night of Fate from Kingdom Hearts 1, I know we're getting something good. This is an excellent battle track, and I'm really glad they went with the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 version of it. They keep it going with even more excellent epic tracks like Destiny's Force and Shrouding Dark Cloud before kicking into what honestly might be one of my favorite battle themes in the series hand in hand. I honestly just love Traverse Town in Kingdom Hearts 1, so hearing this music again in Smash was a real treat. It was also nice to hear Blast Away Gummy Ship 2, as while I know the Gummy Ship segments were not the most popular in the first game, I had my fun with them. And of course, with this being the stage they chose to represent Kingdom Hearts, they couldn't go without Hollow Bastion's music. It's dramatic, heart-pounding, and an overall fantastic track to listen to. Beautiful strings and pianos, beautiful choir vocals, it's maybe the quintessential Kingdom Hearts song. They also added Hollow Bastion's battle theme, Scherzo di Note, which is equally powerful and dramatic to go along with the base world theme. As far as battle music, we also couldn't go without Fragments of Sorrow, the theme for the end of the world in Kingdom Hearts 2, also ported from 2.5. This is just as epic and grandiose as the other battle themes throughout the game, and its beautiful strings and crescendos make it a brilliant piece. Perhaps the biggest surprise was the inclusion of the song Destati, which was not in the game originally, but was in the E3 2001 trailer for it. There is a specific arrangement of it that appears in the game, but this is the original, original version of it. It changes feels a lot, but never loses its luster and ends up being a phenomenal epic battle theme throughout its entire duration. I know this was on the shorter side, but Kingdom Hearts music is an absolute treat, and what they included here is some absolutely incredible stuff. I can see some people not being happy with the fact that all of the KH music is from the first game, but I'm not too bummed about it because the first one is the one I have the most nostalgia with. Even though I acknowledge two is the better game, KH1 is the only game I've played through multiple times, and sometimes I find myself fighting over which one I like better. Plus, Kingdom Hearts 1's music is elite, so I can't argue with the choice of including a lot of it. Sora making it into Smash was an absolute dream come true, even if it took me losing a bet to make it happen. I had to cut my hair as a result. And as someone who really loves the series, it warmed my heart to see a lot of the stuff that was brought in here. The Hollow Bastion stage, Sora's alt costumes, and especially the music. Music is one of the best things about Kingdom Hearts, and what we have here is some of the best of the best. Although that doesn't really do it yet, as there is a massive catalog of miscellaneous music, I won't necessarily dive into all of it because there's 107 tracks that last about 3 hours and 44 minutes, but it's a set of music representing certain franchises that don't have enough to really put them in their own compilation. Some songs are from franchises represented through playable characters, like Dr. Mario and the Ice Climbers, some through stages, some through assist trophies, some through me costumes, so on and so forth. There are even a few songs here that are only accessible
possible when you download certain Mi Fighter costumes, largely because they're not from Nintendo made or published games. I'm gonna give a brief rundown of some of the franchises that are represented here, so buckle up because we have a lot. We've got old school NES franchises like Duck Hunt, Balloon Trip, Ice Climber, and so on. Tetris music because you have to include Tetris music in a video game museum, even though I'm not too crazy about the remixes they used. Smaller and more obscure franchises like Rhythm Heaven, Golden Sun, Bait and Kaido's Panel de Pond, and the mysterious Murasame Castle. A few tracks from Monster Hunter, which does appear in the game in a few areas. Remnants from Nintendo's experimental DS era like Pictochat, Electroplankton, Nintendogs, Brain Age, and Big Brain Academy. Remnants from the experimental Wii era like the Wii Shop Channel, Me Channel, Wii Play, and the Wii Sports series. Cuts from some forgotten Wii U and 3DS games like Nintendo Land, The Wonderful 101, and Codename Steam. And perhaps most stunningly and notably to some, tracks from indie darlings like Undertale, Cuphead, and Shantae Half Genie Hero. Got all that? Good, because that's only really scratching the surface of what the other section offers. Lots of Nintendo franchises you know that I haven't mentioned and some you honestly don't know are here and then some. Even though it sounds like a mishmash of random moments, I'm honestly appreciative of this particular section of songs. I think something like this allows for a lot of Nintendo franchises to be represented in Smash in some way no matter how obscure or forgotten they are. I've always loved Nintendo Land, so I got pumped to see it featured some music from that game. Growing up on the DS and Wii, I got a nostalgia burst from getting to hear a lot of songs and moments from those things again. And it's stuff like this that adds to the museum feel of Super Smash Bros. It's a franchise celebrating Nintendo as a company and gaming as a medium along with the illustrious histories of both. Having so many of these franchises represented in this way really speaks to the wide reach and breadth of content Sakurai and his team were able to compile to make Smash Ultimate's soundtrack what it is. I was gonna list off a bunch of highlights here, but there's 107 songs in this section and I had way too many favorites. So many, in fact, that even after writing them without explanations for the intent of just rattling them off, I felt like it was a part of the script that went on for too long. Also helps that when I read that part out loud to myself in practice, I ran out of breath and I wasn't even talking fast. So if you'd like to see what they are, they are linked in the description. And yes, the Wii Shop channel music is included, as is Megalovania. You're welcome, internet. You're welcome. Overall, man, the Smash Ultimate soundtrack is really something special. I know I might have harped on certain games and franchises for being underrepresented, overloaded with remixes, and all that stuff, but I feel like I have to take a step back and appreciate what this really is. The Super Smash Bros. Ultimate soundtrack is more than just a bunch of songs thrown together without care. It's a celebration of gaming curated to include some of the most iconic musical moments the medium has seen across a vast breadth of franchises. It's the kind of thing you can't help but at least respect, and even despite its length, it's still a worthy listen. Let me put it like this. This experience has definitely taken a lot out of me, and it's not even done. I've got a lot of editing to do. I've filmed almost three hours worth of footage, just of me sitting here talking across different sessions. But I was willing to let it take something out of me because this was a treat to listen to. While listening, I remembered all the good times I had with the games represented here, all the times I heard certain songs in previous Smash games. I got to see how the medium evolved through its music. I got to enjoy great video game music no matter if it's from a franchise I care about or not. Listening to all these songs, I feel like I legitimately got to hear and see the medium evolve before my very eyes and ears. And listening to these soundtracks did one extremely important thing. It reminded me why I love gaming. It made me glad that I fell in love with this crazy medium in the first place, and it made me glad I started taking it more seriously over the last seven or so years. Much like the game itself, Smash Ultimate's soundtrack is a history lesson. It's a museum. It's a celebration. It's a devoted look into the world of video games. No matter the genre, the characters, the style, the current prominence, none of that. If you're here, in this game, it means you made an impact and gaming wouldn't be the same without you. It means that your franchise won the hearts of millions across the globe that connected with your worlds, your characters, your gameplay, and your sense of fun. In an increasingly cynical gaming industry loaded with scummy business tactics and developer and publisher gaslighting towards players about wanting to improve only to fall back into your old ways, I always tip my cap to the developers and creators who remember to make gaming what it's supposed to be. 
fun. The Super Smash Brothers series has always nailed that fun, and with the soundtrack, it's a beautiful ode to the decades of fun this medium and its franchises have provided. No matter how many roads it's taken me down, I've loved gaming, and I hope there never comes a day where I have to put the controller down. And with Super Smash Brothers being my favorite video game franchise, I feel like I owe a lot of that to Mr. Masahiro Sakurai, who no matter what, never wavered on his unending commitment to fun. I doubt he's watching this, but thank you, Mr. Sakurai. You remind me why I love video games. I don't know if I definitely meant for this review to get a rating, as this was mostly done just to really let me swoon about video games, but it should be obvious that it would get an excellent if I was giving it a rating. The size might be a lot to handle for some, but don't be fooled. This is a fantastic set of music that I highly recommend listening to. There's a little something for everyone here, and it's a beautiful ode to the characters and franchises that make gaming great. Here's to many more years of great gaming. But that's just my opinion. What did you guys think of this? Do you love these songs as much as I do? Do you hate them more than I do? Are you just completely indifferent towards them? And what are your favorite franchises in terms of their music? Whatever your thoughts and opinions are, leave them down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that I have linked in the description, thank you. If not, of course, it's no big deal. I totally understand. I have a lot more videos coming in the future now that this is going to be off my back. Some are going to be related to gaming. Plenty are going to be related to music. I'm not leaving the music part out, but I will be trying to do more gaming content. This was just a huge project that I wanted to do and I'm very glad I got to do it. So stay tuned for future videos but until next time thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for being patient while I worked on this project for so long. I appreciate anyone who sat through even a little bit of it because I know this video is going to be long so thank you guys so much unbelievably for watching this. This has been a crazy big project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. I certainly got a lot out of this as much as it wore me down. I really need to go to sleep now because it's about three in the morning. I will see See you guys in the next video. Peace.